Welcome back to the Section 10 Podcast, episode 508, presented by Underdog Fantasy. It is the home of your 80 and 79 third place Boston Red Sox. My name is Jared Carabas, and I am a certified G and a bona fide stud, and you can't teach that. And this right here, this is Coley Mick, and he's seven foot tall, and you can't teach that. That and this right here, this is Tyler Milliken, and he killed his dog Bullet. And you can't teach that. Bada boom, realest guys in the room. Steve, how you doing? Ooh, what up? What up? Section ten in the building. In the mother fucking building. Presented by Blue Moon. Suck one. Produced by Jake Yazzie. Fucking yeah, dude. Season's over. <laughs> it's over. It's Rip. over. Oh, Finally. Coley. He suspend the team. Get him out of here. Get him out. They're joining the one suspension club. I think that's how I make an analogy. Passing a couple others. What do you got though? Can't wait to this. Rosenthal. This is going to be a great one. You know how Jared was talking about the way we were looking at the Red Sox the last couple weeks like a dying person? And you kind of just want them to go already. You want them to move on. I felt like the four-game winning streak was that period when someone's dying like two days before where they're like, yo, they were talking to everyone. They were happy. They were doing all these things. And then they just fucking croak. That's Mm -hmm. what today felt like. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's pretty much what it was. That's pretty much what it was. Um... Yeah, I, I feel like this team has had multiple deaths. It's weird. <laughs> like, most deaths. This might be the most deaths any Red Sox team's ever had. Yeah, like I, I remember in May being like season's over. Um, I remember different points losing. Th- there were like unspoken deaths too. You know, like uh, when Kenley gave up the walk off bomb in Houston, I was like, this fucking season's over. Um, losing that game in um la to start the second half it's like ooh, this feels like you know this isn't very good but you know losing that last game to the white Sox, season's over losing today obviously officially the season's over there there were so many different seasons over points where you know i was listening to the uh nesson post game with jim rice and tc and you know, they're talking about all these things that the Red Sox need to do this offseason. I feel like I don't know where you guys are at on all this, but it feels like it's a lot of work. <laughs> you know, like like they need to completely revamp the bullpen. Uh, they need to add a frontline starting pitcher. And as far as like the position players go, you've got you've got the prospects that are coming up. It's like, all right, yeah. So Kyle Teal is the plan behind home plate. Um, but you've got Duran, Willier, Sedan, your outfield's kind of set. Uh, Devers, Story, Vaughn Grissom slash Christian Campbell at second, Casas at first. Like the position player part of it is kind of set. Like what, unless you're trading from that, which I anticipate that to be the case, but I don't, I don't know, dude, like the way that Craig Breslow talks, it's, it's like, it, that was such a weird, all of it was super weird to come out of today. I, we're going to get into that. But first, even the last week he had comments a week ago, first, similar kind of wrap. But up first. The year. But first, Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. Playing their pick'em game is as simple as selecting higher or lower on player stats, strikeouts, total bases, home runs, and so much more. Make entries of all baseball, or you can mix and match across your other favorite sports. You can win up to 100 times your money, and it's a ton of fun. We'll be giving our picks out for the uh, wild card stream. Are you coming to those, Tyler? I'm in. Why are you acting like this is the first time you've heard of of this? (laughs) I was never... This never got mentioned to me. I don't think Tyler was told yet, honestly. I think this was the first time. I'm not in these, uh, you know, top secret calls. We don't have fucking calls. I've been talking about it on the podcast for like three weeks. I didn't know you were referring to us. Well, I assume Coley. 
<laughs> I'm not saying no. I just didn't know. You think the whole time you're just like, oh, B.I.D. and obviously Coley. <laughs> the, the classic kind combo of. that always yeah. does stuff together. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I, I have always like Jay Hay will have, come up. <clears throat> I have been thinking recently. It's weird. I haven't been invited ever on the B.I.D. I mean, we don't really like do like neither podcast does consistent guests. Yes, Tyler. I, I also find it weird. I've never been on B.I.D. No, the, that's less weird. Uh, that makes sense. <laughs> For, I didn't say every time. Yeah. I didn't say every week <laughs> that ever in the history of the program. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I yeah, we just don't really have like it's not like a thing that we do usually. Like Dallas, da- the last time Dallas came on here was 2017. It's been a while. That Definitely is not has. true. <laughs> you know what while i'm here let me cook jay oh, hey was brother. also on like <laughs> no, within the last cook. year uh, dallas cook. when he was at your house was on yeah but he was just kind of here that wasn't like a scheduled appearance all i'm talking about mm. is speaking on the podcast the last like, scheduled appearance that Dallas made was in 2017. It was seven years ago, yeah. yeah. When he was there, did he uh, open the Underdog Fantasy app and use promo code Jared? Uh, yeah, he did, actually. J-A-R-E-D to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash and a special pick on Underdog. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code Jared. Yeah, he did do that. Um, can we talk about these Breslow quotes? Or does anyone want to... Should we treat this as a eulogy? I feel like it's such awkward timing because... Like they're officially eliminated from postseason contention today, but our next podcast will also be the end of the season. So, like, what do we? If we do the whole eulogy now, then what do we talk about <laughs> on Sunday? Well, hey, maybe We've some also stags. There's some other stuff from the last week, and I'm sure we can talk about. Like, this feels like when we should do the eulogy. It's officially over. They're dead. It's officially dead. But I think we bury them on Sunday. So it's kind of like. Doing- We've what? Been doing Tyler, eulogy for what? A month and a half. We've been doing a eulogy for two weeks, two and a half weeks. I mean, a month basically. Yeah. I mean, what else can you say? Like, I, I just, I think the only thing that I would add to all of this, this, uh, the the finality of it all, is it's another three year stretch without the postseason. And I, and listen, this is if you're a fan of another team. Stop listening. This is for Red Sox fans only. I don't want to fucking hear that your shit bum team has gone through many stretches of even longer. Missing the, like this isn't f- about you and this isn't for you. If you're a Red Sox fan and you have expectations that are different from other fan bases, our expectation is that we don't go fucking three years with no playoffs. And the fact that we've now lived through that twice, three straight years, no playoffs. Um, what is it like the the second time or it's like the longest streaks like tying the longest streak since 1994 or some shit it's just very rare it's very rare that the red sox go three straight years without making the playoffs and i've now fucking had two of those and it sucks i don't enjoy it um and anyone that's like oh you ever heard of a rebuild every team goes through them fuck you like my my rebuilds didn't like the Red Sox wouldn't go through these full rebuild phases. It was like, yeah, like we lose guys to free agency, but we replace them with other players. Like we're just always filling holes, so to speak. Tyler. Yeah. That's supposed to be the thing when you're the Boston Red Sox, you're not the Baltimore Orioles or the Houston Astros where you're supposed to, you know, miss the playoffs in five or six seasons. And yeah, you had some mediocrity in there, but if you invested at least in the last two years team, should probably go back to 2022 when you stayed over the luxury tax. You should have invested in that team more. There's no reason why you shouldn't have made some type of playoff appearance or run over these three years. You had every opportunity. It's just how much do you want to invest in the group? And as we've seen, they draw the line at 225 and 23. This year it was 226. You look. Yeah, this at... doesn't really. This doesn't really happen. I'll go for it, Mick. Well, I was just because like Jared's talking about missing the playoffs. We used to miss the playoffs when they would allow four teams in and it would be like, what the fuck guys get your shit together. Yeah. <laughs> I see people like throwing a parade in the streets because we almost barely qualified for the six seed. It's <laughs> fucking pathetic. What's happened to the expectations of the fan base, mm-hmm. let alone just the team itself. 
The team itself, they put themselves through a self-inflicted rebuild that they didn't have to do. We don't have to go over that again, but that's what happened. That was a dumb decision. We can all agree with it. The fans don't have to be okay with that. They don't have to be like, oh, well, they gave it a good shot coming into the year. We didn't even think we were going to be near the sixth seed. We were holding a playoff spot at the All-Star break, and they didn't fucking do anything. It was worse than that. It feels close to 11 than anything. Yeah, missing the playoffs five out of six years is inexcusable. Like like Coley's saying, now that you have six teams that make it, like basically half the league makes the playoffs, and five of the six years, you're not even qualifying for They've never the, made the it under the game, expanded playoffs. Which is pathetic. Like, that's there's no excuse for that at all. And even with a team uh, that going into the season the last three years should have had more resources they still could have made the playoffs and didn't add enough at these deadlines and didn't, you know, end up qualifying. But yeah, this doesn't if you're under the age of 50, I think this is like the second or third time that they've had a five out of six years of not making the playoffs. So that like this just in general rarely happens. And there's even less of an excuse for it to happen now. Even saying that, I still felt like a new level of sad after tonight, like understandable. They weren't going to make the playoffs. But for, you know, us folks here that and people listening that watch a ton of these games, there is a, a finality to the mathematical elimination that stings a little bit more when you're like, oh, man, like it really is over. Like there really is no chance. I kind of enjoy these last couple nights of cooking the numbers up and being like, all right, if this thing that has no chance of happening, if the, if these four you know records the rest of the way go down and the Red Sox can squeak in. It was at least nice to have that delusion uh, heading into the last weekend of the year. But it is pathetic at, at its core that we even have to be doing that. If we were in the AL Central, only the White Sox would be behind us. Literally the worst team in baseball history. That's the only team that would be behind us. And the AL Central, like I spit on the AL Central, it's not a real division. Neither of the Centrals are real. It's pathetic. Like, the, you look at a team like the Brewers. We shouldn't be sitting here being like, wow, that's a much better run ball club than the Boston Red Sox. That's pathetic. I think even, like, and I appreciated Alex Cora kind of sitting there while he did acknowledge, like, you know, how many people had us getting to this spot. He was also like, we blew it. It was right in our hands, and that's how you should feel. Because you go back to the All-Star break, you were 10 games above 500. The Tigers were three games below 500. You had Four. a 52% chance to make the playoffs. I have them at 47 and 50 here, but well, you're them. wrong. Um, <laughs> but they had a 7.6% chance of making the playoffs. Like that was the difference. And that team that sold and actually took parts from their team at the deadline still went up. Yeah, you did blow it. There's no reason that team should have jumped you. None. And the way that Cora was talking about it in the post game, like I'm glad that he, you know, said the things he said. It's like the clubhouse is very quiet. I'm happy that these guys are wearing it, that it matters to him that much. But even alluding to the the rotation, him feeling like, he, you know, we know a lot more about what the Red Sox rotation is now. Like, yeah, that's great and all. And, and he even alluded to the fact that, like, this should be the last year that we're kind of suffering like this. In theory, yes. But like, obviously, we have all offseason to talk about this. And and TC, Jared, you referenced it, him talking in the post game about how they need an ace. I think we all feel the same way. <laughs> What's the reason to be confident they're going to get? this ace on this rotation. Like there's no real reason to have any kind of confidence that that's going to happen, even though we all know and all acknowledge that that's clearly on top of other pieces, the lead thing that they're going to need moving forward. So unless that happens, like I'm scared that they're going to lean into the, you know, the fact that the, the three homegrown guys had 30 starts and be like, Oh, look at that. And then Giolito, it's like, no, don't like, I, I'm trying to get ahead of like, don't feed us that. I don't want to be fed that all off They're season and, and hear Breslow. They are, but I just, I they don't already want did. to hear that. You started to like get the, it today the from Breslow. the only thing. Like, I don't want to hear that as like, oh, well, you know, at least now we know. Nah, and you know that you have a 500 team. That's what you know. You, you have to add on top of a team that's not capable of qualifying when half the league makes the postseason. That's what you have. I think but, like I with mean, Breslow today, like you got those comments of him not being committal one way. And I don't expect him to be David Dombrowski saying, we're going to get this. We're going to get that. But to make the point and be like, well, we had guys who showed they could be an ace at different points this year. Tanner Houck maybe flashed some of that in the first half of the season. He's not an ace. Brian Bayo, nope, not having that conversation. Carter Crawford, no, I'm not having that conversation. You have homegrown starters. We can acknowledge that. You look at Tanner Houck, even if you want to be optimistic about what happened in the second half, his K per nine was below seven. He had turned into a sinker ball guy because he was not able to miss bats to the same degree. Maybe he takes a step forward. I think he's a fine number three. You can talk yourself into a number two. 
it's so obvious to everybody you need that number one. And the options are out there. You have the trade assets to do it. And that's where I cling because to me, it sounded more like they're thinking trade packages and stuff like that than, you know, spending money when, you know, they're going to have 87 million before the first luxury tax going into next year. What'd you say their rotation ERA was, Tyler? Eight they're six in, in MLB right now. Six in MLB. So I'm so fucking angry <laughs> at the comments from the Juan Soto video. I yeah. actually don't think they need a frontline pitcher based on that people being so fucking stupid and B, the facts. The facts are their pitching was six. I believe they're eighth in runs. They need more runs than they do pitching, arguably. I don't think it's a very uh, in good faith argument, but I think you could argue that using the facts. You look at the Yankees last year. They needed pitching. That was all they needed. They went out and they got one Soto. If you look at the second half alone, what was the only thing keeping us in games? Not the bullpen, obviously, but starting pitching because the offense did fucking nothing over the last month. This over the last, month. yeah, it was yeah, it was sure. start, start, for a good started month post break. They were they were slugging. Yeah, were June, slugging. July, most of August were not very good. The point the point is still valid, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, saying. they could easily upgrade this offense. Like it was inconsistent throughout the year at best. Well, the, even like uh, the Danny I, I, I don't Jansen know the stuff. exact stat, but when I'm sure you saw this too, Tyler, but TC putting out there that they had what 18 blown saves? Yes. In in the second half or something mm-hmm. like that. Like they only converted 13, I think, of their 31 save opportunities. Well, you can and blow the thing a that save sucked, multiple times in a game, too. Yeah, right. true. Yeah, it's a little bit of a wonky stat, but like right. the it's thing not that, like Kenley blew 31. No, saves. I know. When, <laughs> when you hear that, it makes it sound like he had like the worst year ever correct, and he was one of correct. the uh, the better closers. But still. The the second stat on top of that that pissed me off even more was I think it was the second most save opportunities that like any team had in the second half. It's like Jesus, like right. You're the lineup is consistently putting you in a, a position to win games, scoring enough runs to win games. Obviously, the last you know five weeks it hasn't really been like that. A couple spurts here and there, but it, it, you got to be able to close Jared. these games out, Jerry. I'm gonna blow your dicks off right now. Please. Sounds good. So all this talk about trading for an ace, right? Before Chris Sale, I say Red Sox trade for an ace. What what name jumps out to you? Josh Beckett. Okay. Yeah, that was probably the first one. Yeah. So, interestingly enough. um, Bring him back. (laughs) <laughs> he is a free agent <laughs> <laughs> he is a... <laughs> I like you saying it like we wouldn't know that this guy is available he's available and the price is going to be so low. Oh, he's gonna There's be also so... no chance Beckett ever filled out his retirement paperwork no. like no chance no, no. no. Uh, alright hear me out <laughs> hear me out on last bring... another free agent <laughs> he's available <laughs> Pedro. Pedro. Oh my God. Available. <laughs> Pap in the bullpen is going to go crazy. <laughs> All right. Listen to this. Are you listening? <laughs> you sitting down right now. What's what's a Deo Nomo up to? Yeah. What do you, what do you got? What All do you right. Got? Listen. I'm listening. What season of Josh Beckett's stands out the most to you? 07. 07. 07. 11 okay. was really good. Shut up. Right? It was a one word answer. <laughs> in 2007, Josh. Nine. <laughs> in, in 2007, Josh Beckett made 30 starts and had a 327 ERA with an 1141 whip. Tanner Houck this year, 30 starts, a 312 ERA. In an eleven forty two whip. We're winning the World Series. Boys. I mean, yeah. I'm just are saying, we still alive? Wait, are just, we mathematically eliminated? I'm <laughs> just saying. I mean, you look at I, I and and Beckett obviously pitched like fucking twenty more innings in the same amount of starts, which was crazy. Um, but they made the exact games. same amount of starts. How had the lower ERA? And the exact same whip as Beckett in 2007 this year. Yeah. The difference I, is I, the innings. Yeah. He was that ridiculous in the first half. I think in the second half, you just saw a lot of things that signaled, you know, when your FIPS over four, it starts to point to some things where you're not missing the same amount of bats you were. How crazy is that, though? We don't need to break down fucking Taylor. We're talking about how <laughs> 2024 <laughs> we're talking moving forward Tanner here, right? Like what season is... 
very much com- comparable to Josh Beckett's 2007 season. It's like, man, we got to fucking trade for it. Like, remember when we traded for Beckett and he came in and just shoved it up ever in everyone's ass? It's like, OK, well, that's pretty much what well, Tanner Houck did this year. A big part of what you remember with Beckett is what he did in the postseason. Yes. Too. It's not, mm-hmm. you know, not just the regular. <laughs> well, he season, was so. Cy Young runner up. And no, yeah, I'll, of course. No, trust me. It's a valid point that, that the stats are similar. But and at a certain point, you then just need to become an ace. Like, I, I think the ace title is probably one of the most thrown around things and, and perceived differently by tons of different people words. So it's it's kind of hard to tag it onto a guy. Typically, you got to like be like a Chris Sale where you've made three straight all star starts. And I was, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, he's an ace. Yeah, he's the guy. So if, if how keeps putting these numbers up, then sure. But this is the first year he's made 30 starts. So like, the separator is definitely the innings. Like, yeah, let's see. Red Sox Beckett, are 16 innings and in innings by their starting rotation. This eight year. and two thirds, eight innings, eight innings, eight innings, eight innings, eight innings, There's eight innings, eight innings, seven. Way to do this. What? <laughs> no, this is the best way to do it. <laughs> Jake, you can you add these up, Jake? Yeah, Jake. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. Yeah. Where it was making perfect sense. Um, no, the number of times that he pitched into the eighth inning, um, whereas, I mean, that's just not, that's not baseball yeah. anymore. No, I mean, how, I would like well, to it was know early in the, the year 07... he had that like eight and a third inning and they wouldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> they talked about it for like a month. <laughs> they kept bringing right. him on during the game to be like, Tanner, remember that time he pitched into the ninth? Yeah, they were talking about it like it was no hitter. He had the, he had the greatest <laughs> start ever. He had a, he had a shutout. Mm. did Tanner Houck in the first half. That was like a two-hour game. Which, uh, I, his his complete game shout-out, his, his one complete game shout-out tied for the league lead. Crazy. That's absurd. Mm-hmm. I would like teams? to know the 07 bullpen stats. I would like to know those oh, compared to better. this team. Yeah. I mean, everything. That whole team. That is a good point, though, Jerry. How many teams would you point to right now and say they have an ace? Well, I mean, it feels like the Yankees do not have one. The Orioles agree. had one in the first half. Probably single digits, right? It's probably single digits. Uh, the Blue Jays don't really have one anymore. I would have said Gosman. Right. Before the season to now, all of them would have, like, you would either, like, before Cole got hurt, he was reigning Cy Young. You'd obviously, even if we fucking hate him, you would have said him, but now you wouldn't. Uh, same, like, you were the point you were just making with Toronto. Tampa's got, like, a million guys who could be that just Aren't. can't pitch for a full <laughs> season. Baltimore, yeah, Corbin Burns, I think, is a traditional ace in the sense, and we're going to see one. He's going to end up on the Dodgers on a one-year deal because no one's going to want to meet his contract demands. You look at the White Sox with Crochet and ace? Fuck no. There's uh, no way you can look me in the he face. He pitched to that days. level before the workload stuff at the well, end. Of right, the we year. just took it off of Corbin Burns. We're not gonna we're gonna give it to Garrett Crochet. I would I call Cor- Corbin Burns an ace. He's an ace to me. Cleveland. I mean, there's there's a huge part of the ace thing where it's like you you earn that in the postseason. And are we do we feel comfortable giving these three guys, these homegrown guys, the ball in a postseason game? No. Like, no. No. So I wouldn't feel good about Tanner Hark starting game one. No. I would. How can Bayo? I would cut her. No, out of the bullpen, sure. No, Bayo in the postseason, I'd be throwing up. Yeah, oh, I'd be. It, he's only he showed up this whole when when everyone else sucked ass, he showed up. Yeah, he was, he up was he was better, but he wasn't like give me the fucking ball in game two. Good. I don't know if we're blowing a guy for a 3-1. I feel like a 3-7 for that whole second half or whatever it ended up being feels pretty pretty similar. No, he's a fine game three. I don't need the season coming down to Bayo on the mound. I like how we already lost game one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. We're projecting I... the, uh, the 2025 postseason, so we need Bayo to save the season in game three. Yeah. Probably on the on the road wild card series. Chris Sale with the highest or the best rather ERA in the majors. That's sick. Mm. Bad. I give Breslow's first year a doom. <laughs> yeah, big doom. That's fair. Two thousand seven Red Sox bullpen was the second best in all of baseball in ERA. Yeah, there you go. Then that's with Eric Gagne trying to fuck it all up. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, he saw first, that and was like, "I'm gonna ruin this." <laughs> first before the Gagne acquisition. Yeah, they were definitely first before Gagne got there. Red Sox were fourth in rotation ERA that year, or excuse me, twenty sixth. Let me flip that. Huh? Yeah, or twenty seventh. Twenty seventh, technically. <laughs> Wait, what? That's oh, kind of so crazy. You, you went from like you were doing the fourth. The first. Red Sox <laughs> yeah, wrote the Red Sox okay. were twenty seventh in ERA in two thousand seven. That can't be true. They hit the shit out of the ball. Yeah. What were they in run scored? Probably Seven. first, right? Oh, they had to have been quite high. Who the fuck? Uh, the Beckett's Eight. Cy, uh, the Cy oh, wait, Young no, runner up yeah. season. Daisuke. <laughs> I think Tyler's just making stuff up. Yeah, right I'm just giving you fourth. Fourth, yeah. What do you say? And run scored for the Sox. We're fact checking all this. There's no way they were 26th in Team ERA. Just rotation. Yeah, I know rotation. that. Rotation. Oh my God. No, I am wrong. Well, not wrong. Yeah, I am wrong. They they had the sixth they, best team uh, rotation ERA. In I am at fourth here, but it's 421. I think that speaks to just the error more really than sense. anything. So you just saw 421. Fourth best. Like, yeah, yeah, no, no, it is. Awful. No, fourth best is was correct. You were right at the start. You were yeah. right at the start. I just saw four and I was like, oh, wait, there's no way. This is and I flipped That's got to be 26. <laughs> That's like the era, around. though, right? Like when you kind of compare it to what it is now. I think that's why you right. look at Josh Beckett's numbers differently as well than what you would look at Tanner Houck today. The Correct. 320 ERA in that yeah. era is a lot different than they what Tanner Houck did best. in 2024. Yeah, just, no, he, he corrected it. We're, yeah. We're, we're there. It's just right. a 411. Yeah, 411. Uh, no, yeah, no. Uh, four, they were, <laughs> the Red <laughs> Sox you. rotation ERA was 421 in 2007. <laughs> Four. There's so many people driving right now, like, I need to know the exact <laughs> fucking ERA yeah, for the 07 asshole. Red Sox rotation. Yeah, the 07 rotation had a 421 <laughs> ERA. The best ERA in baseball is the Padres at 411. <laughs> the the Mariners have the best starters ERA this year at 341, and they are not going to make the playoffs. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, well, shit, you know. Back then, they'd tell you, like, dude, you're given seven innings. I don't give a fuck what's going to happen to you or not. Like, go out. We'll take seven and four, you know, seven and five every day of the week. But, yeah, I think that's why you got to look at Beckett and Hauk differently in those realms. I do. Well, no shit. A lot of reasons. Well, you're just comping them. They had very similar seasons minus the, the innings. Like, Beckett would go deeper into starts, but for the innings that were pitched, the numbers are very, very similar. But also, going deeper into those starts is probably why the bullpen had a better ERA. Those definitely have a correlation, yes. And mm -hmm. I think when you look at Tanner Houck, you do see it's a tale of two halves. It really is, even if you want to be positive about it. That's yeah. the whole team. Like I, I know we're not singling him out, but I could say that for just about every guy on the team. Like 23 out of the 25 guys on the roster. But that, to me, that up and downness is part of the reason why I do think you need to invest in a front end starter that you know you can book in, and hopefully, you know, as long as he doesn't blow his elbow out, you're going to get 30 starts of top of the what rotation quality. Say. Well, I'm not advocating it's the biggest to not add a sport. fucking starter. I'm not saying like, hey guys, uh, we don't need to add a starter because we basically have Josh Beckett 2.0 and Tanner Houck, and you just didn't realize it. You know, no, but like you, you can play around the stats, and you can say, well, the Red Sox had the seventh best OPS in baseball this year. Right, they need help offensively. They need a right-handed bat. Obviously, they'll Tyler tell you that, that be they're just out. fine. Run it back. I disagree. And those I players we disagree. mentioned, they're going to get moved. Some of them are not going to be here. Um. Yeah. Yeah. You've already said get Tristan Casas off this team. You said that. Oh, I'm happy. Other people are starting to wake up to the fact that Tristan Casas could hit left-handed pitching. It's really nice. It's nice that everybody else caught up. Thrilled by that. Shout out AC, who's now you know totally into the idea. Let's play Alex Cora or Tristan Casas every day. Let's let him face lefties. <laughs> go nuts. Play AC we're, every day. We're not going to go there. We're not going to pinch hit you for Romy Gonzalez anymore, Tristan. Go cook. Have fun out there. He's been better against left-handed pitching than Jaron Duran this year or Rafael Devers. <laughs> wow. I would when your whole offense is giving you absolute dog shit and you're begging for someone to carry your offense, Tristan Casas is probably one of the few guys who could do that if he got right. Am I wrong? No, I mean, Casas. 
five times baseball, in 12 right? games. He's doing his fucking touchdown. He's... So who do you want to <laughs> trade him for? Yeah, who are you trading Casas for? Christian Javier, buy low, coming off the injury. <laughs> it would it would take a lot. It would take a lot for mm. me to trade Tristan Casas. Mm. But no to Javier. We could probably right? get Chris Bryant. You know, we need that righty back. Dude, hell yeah. Oh, now it's that contract. That. We're not paying that contract. Mm. If they eat half of it, I'll give you Tristan Casas. He's right. 10 minutes away from retiring. No, thank you. He's fucking retired. He's fucking retired in no, Colorado. Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant's done. Bold. The bold Coley, Coley brings up a valid point here. Because even just diving in, trying to find... I'm trying to find aces. Searching for aces mm-hmm. this year. Not a lot of them. It's a short list. It's a short list. Mm-hmm. And then how many of those guys would be available? Even shorter. So It's that, also a free agent. Well, it's also... Don't even just look at this year. Look at the last two years. Because right now, we would all agree Chris Sills is an ace. He's going to win Cy Young. Last year, la- when we were doing this, I mean, we didn't have the show last year. But when this <laughs> episode was happening on all of our independent programs, and we were talking about Alex Cora saying, that's my opening day starter next year, we were laughing. We were like, we- that can't be serious. And that was would have been the best idea ever. <laughs> like, No doubt the best idea ever. Uh so that's where it's like year to year, Ace fluctuates guy to guy, half to half. Like that's where it's like, yeah, over the last two years, fucking, uh, who's the Brewers guy? Freddie, what's his face? Peralta? Jared. What's up? Um, yeah, Peralta. Yeah, Freddie like, Peralta. You called, uh, we would have got called an Ace last year, and then this year, not as much. Yeah. I mean, they, they always have guys like that, like Brandon Woodruff. No, for sure. It burns. Yeah. He's Dude, been like consistently and a frontline guy, but like that's why I I personally wouldn't pay him is because the strikeouts go down every single year. Well, then you also look at it, it's like look at what the Phillies are doing with Zach Wheeler at the top of the rotation, a guy they just extended and paid, and he's gone and done their thing. But he wasn't a guy many people viewed as an ace when he initially no. first signed that deal, and it's been you know arguably the best no, contract. The Mets were like to laughing when he yeah. when they gave him that contract. They're like, good luck, enjoy him, and look what he turned into. So, like, there's different ways to go about it, but I also think you see what happens when you invest heavily in the top of your rotation, and it's like, all right, well, the Phillies are finding that consistency by doing that year in and year out. I'm obviously Even if not they haven't won a World Series yet. In the, the rotation, obviously they should. But, A, I don't think it's as much of a lock as it, like, we saw it this year. We, we gave a big contract to a pitcher. He pitched zero innings for the team. Like, I... That's that could still be part of it. That's where it's like if you're not going to add two, I don't really know. And I can't have the oh woe is me. We don't have the the space to do it. That was a lot of the the fucking comments too. Like oh yeah, sign Soto. We have all these. We have this huge need at pitching. It's like why are we choosing? What like what the fuck are we talking about? What's the why do we have to choose? We don't. Yeah, uh, even though you look at the Rangers last year, though, in a lot of ways, like they pay Jacob DeGrom, he gives you nothing. Max Scherzer really wasn't able to give you much. But you have Nate Evaldi, who major part, Jordan Montgomery, major part. I think mm-hmm. it's just investing in those quality arms. That's where typically it holds you. But, you know, I, even though the Jordan Montgomery thing, people may say, well, look what happened to him this year. I think with a normal spring training, he's still a very good MLB starting pitcher. But, you know, it doesn't have to be the most definite form of an ace, but you need something that is a top of the rotation arm. Just get ready for them to sell you on the fact that that guy's already here. So see, that, that's what I'm the most afraid of heading into Coley, the offseason. The way you're thinking, mm-hmm. I'm fine with as long as it's like, hey, we're going to get maybe the young arm that isn't seen as a true ace. And that's where like Kirby or Gilbert or someone can slot in where it's like, can he elevate to that level? Yeah, probably in the next couple of years. He hasn't got to that point yet. That's fine with me. If you're like, hey, Corbin Burns, who the K per nine is going down and it seems like he's going to the other side you say i'm good i probably agree with you on that max sure. it's a little different for me but like yeah i'm fine if that's the way you want to go i just think you do need to supplement yourself with that because also pitching pipeline wise what's going to play out the next couple years with injuries and all that you're going to need that depth because in terms of arms you're confident that are going to be a starter you can't even feel that way about luis perales coming off tommy john who knows what it'll look like sure i mean it does seem like it was didn't they say he had like the old, like traditional Tommy John too, not this newfangled 
Good. Mm-hmm. That's what I I don't want new Tommy John surgeries until they get the fucking <laughs> Whitlock's throwing there. right now with the you know the brace procedure. He's already getting ready oh, for a normal offseason. They'll probably bring him up for the last game of the season. Um <laughs> I think one of the more interesting names, and we're going to do this every week, I realize that there's only so many guys we can talk about, but I still can't shake how good and how dominant Walker Bueller was. I know it's been a couple of years, but if you're looking at a young guy, I'm not saying give him 10 years, $300 million, obviously, but the Dodgers seem all right with letting him walk, and the Dodgers don't always make the best decisions when it comes to guys that are leaving. That's a fair point. Yeah. He's just been... like. You know, and people would greet that with the kind of like, hey, well, this is another guy off the scrap heap that who you're trying to fix and you're trying to rediscover and try to get to that point. I don't know. I I wouldn't put him quite in the Shane Bieber tier for me where it's a guy I know I've seen pitch in the last couple of years and be successful. I didn't put him on any tier. No, no. I didn't put him on a single tier. But if we're like talking arms, like I would probably slot someone like a Shane Bieber ahead in terms of what I want. If we're looking for someone you're hoping to get back on track or heal up. But you have to fucking trade for him. No, he's a free agent. He's a free agent. Biebs? Yeah. Oh, I thought he had one more year. No. Oh, all right. Then, yeah, get his ass over here. Here we go. go. Get him, Bueller, get them all. He had original Tommy John, though. The list, so what, will he be like May, June next year? Potentially. Around then? So, you're James Paxton. Uh, Garrett Cole can opt out. Probably not going to happen. Blake Snell (laughs) can opt out. I imagine that will happen. Justin Verlander is 75 years old. Max Scherzer, 74 years old. Corbin Burns, Clayton Kershaw, 76 years old. Max Freed, Shane Bieber, Jordan Montgomery hit his vesting option, I believe. He had 10 starts he had to make for the Diamondbacks, and he's just stuck there. Uh, I'm sure they <laughs> love that. Uh, where was I? Walker Bueller, Nathan Avaldi is a vesting option. I believe that hit. Robbie Ray can opt out. Alex Cobb, Kyle Hendricks, Charlie Morton, Freddie Peralta's got a club option. They've got him an in indentured servitude in Milwaukee. Merrill, Ke- Merrill Kelly, club option. Lucas Giolito, player option. I'm sure he can't wait to test the waters. Sean Mania can opt out. Michael Waka, <laughs> Wade Miley, somehow still available. Yes, Michael Lorenzo still alive. No, wanted. <laughs> Lance Lynn's got a club option. I'm sure that'll get declined the second they can do it. Kyle Gibson, Luis Severino, uh, Frankie Montas, James Paxson retired, uh, Jack Flaherty, who we showed zero interest in last year, a guy who I wouldn't hate. Again, this isn't a young ace that we're about to talk about, but you say Kikuchi. I just need a guy who catches some big Z's on this team. The thing is, though, like you have one spot, basically, and I know that you need more than five starters for depth purposes, but all these guys that you're talking about, like you're not going to sign one of these guys to stash him in Worcester, go with a six-man rotation. So you add one guy, you go player X or pitcher X, Giolito, Bayo, Hauk, Crawford. I can't have Crawford. Yeah, I mean, like a definite. He's not a definite, but that's I how think, they look at it right yeah. now. I said I the same thing, thing to Maz anymore. tonight. I was like, you know, like, oh, what do you what do you think about Cutter Crawford? And I was like, well, if if you just covered up <clears throat> the uh, the homers, be like, yeah, Fine he made season. he made thirty starts and he has a low four ERA. I would have been thrilled with that at the beginning of the year. You tell me Cutter Crawford's making thirty starts with like a four and a quarter ERA or less than that. I'm like, yeah, sign me up for that. Is the number five guy? Yeah, give me that. But like, it's like, all right, yeah, but he also gives up a shit ton of home runs. Okay, all right, but he's he's your number five guy, and it's a low four. It's not a fucking, like, Nick Pavetta is going to pitch to a 568, you know? Like, Cutter Crawford's pitching to a 515 or a 415. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's about what I expect, and I'm more than happy to sign up for that. And there's a crazy thing. Like you look at his batting average against this year. He's 13th in all of baseball. The names ahead of him, Michael King, Framber Valdez, Chris Sale, Cole Reagans, Bailey Ober, Scooble, Bryce Miller, Gilbert, Manaya, Cease, Wheeler, Blanco. Blanco yeah, he don't give up hits, but when he, he does give them up, they go over the fence. That's fine. That's fine. There are a lot of solo But like Bale had that issue in the first half. I mean, yeah. Yeah, then he started giving a pass ball and it went away. Um, one thing you bring up, Michael King, and I, I do think that's a fascinating person to think about, not as a Red Sox target, obviously, but last year, the Yankees, again, they needed pitching. They traded Michael King uh, along with their uh, top pitching prospect to go get Soto. 
and then they sign pitchers to replace that. I don't know if that's that's a path we haven't talked about. Everyone's focused on the outfield uh, with obvious reason. We talked at the beginning of the year, like the Red Sox wanted to get a deal done with with Hauk. Everyone was confused why after they didn't even want him in the rotation to start the year. Would it be crazy if they dangled him? If they dangled who? Tanner Hauk. That would be a little crazy to me, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think it is. Well, I, I don't think they're not going to look at this offseason as needing to get multiple starters. I, I think there's like a 0% chance they're approaching it like that. So, like Jared, you allude to it, but, and Coley, you listed the guys out there. I think they'll probably target a couple of those guys, like maybe three or four of those dudes. We'll get the the rumors that they're interested, and and then we see if it actually happens, and I think they're fully okay with not adding what would be deemed an ace. And like we mentioned, that that word does vary uh, from season to season. I was just looking it up. There's no starters in, in uh, all of the majors that finished in the top 10 in ERA for starters last year and also did it this year. It's a completely new list. So it's that obviously changes frequently. Uh, Tanner Houck is just outside that list. He's 11th in, the, in uh, starters ERA. So... I don't know. It does kind of scare me because I I think we always want the flashy like, oh, man, they went for it. And like this is, you know, even if it doesn't work out, like at least they they made the effort. I would be okay with like a Walker Bueller or somebody in that, you know, in that stratosphere, because at least that shows me, you know, he'll have potential of being that guy. And you're not just going to rely on the dudes you have in house. I don't want them to really rely on anything from Giolito. And then whatever they get can be just a nice little bonus if it's good. But, you know, we'll have all offseason to talk about the rotation stuff. It's just I don't think they're going to target more than more than one dude for for that that spot. This this Tigers run really fucked up my agenda for the offseason. <laughs> like just yeah, Scoobles not going anywhere. They got no, Joe no. up today. He's going. They're, no, maybe a dynasty in the making. Yeah, he loves pitcher for that. Like, I don't think I've seen anyone more hyped up on the mound than school. I mean, it helps when you're like the best pitcher in the league, but he, he matches uh you know, that spot there. I think he really enjoys playing for them. I think the like, city sucks when you go to the idea of like dealing a Hulk or dealing from the rotation too. I think a big part of the Andrew Bailey thing, as we've talked about is another year of this program going, you know, how do these guys elevate with another off season underneath them? If you're kind of taking Hulk out and you saw this jump in one year and now you're kind of reinserting these different pieces and hoping, are you stalling that development or kind of pushing it back when you're trying to compete? And like, for the Walker Bueller stuff, like that's a guy. He's had Tommy John twice, two Tommy Johns. He left the team this year to go fucking figure his brain out because he couldn't pitch successfully at this point. Like he hasn't been a successful starting pitcher. That's even better than you know, call it a number four since twenty twenty one. Like that's a long time How ago. How old's Walker Bueller though? He's, he's gonna be he's thirty like this upcoming year. Twenty nine. I mean that's thirty. That's that part of it's fine. No, I mean, obviously, the TJ stuff seasons. and anyone you're going to get at a discount is obviously a con- like that's a risk. There's you should be risk higher involved. than that, is, that, though. But yeah. how many there's the list of not, aces that are going to be available for it's very slim. There's not going to be a lot of guys that you can actually acquire that we're all going to agree that will expect them to be an ace in 2025 for the Red Sox. That list is not long at all. Give no, me I someone mean, who's been better than a number four starter in the last three seasons. It doesn't sure, have to not. be Bueller, but I'm just saying that's probably more what they would target than like the three aces that are going to be quote unquote available. Yeah, then no, that's no. where I'm like, go trade. No doubt. I and say available as as trade too. Like, like Castillo. Yeah, that's, that's part of it. That's where I keep falling back on Castillo. He went 11 and 12 this year, 364 ERA, 1.9 war. His numbers last year, uh, better across the board. Uh, so that's a guy, what Steve was just saying fluctuated a little bit didn't be didn't fall off the face of the earth but if you talk about a guy who s- would stabilize your rotation i feel like he hits every every check mark other than he already has a big contract it's a little what's Beckett-y. the control for the mariners guys they still have like at least three years. years for all those dudes yeah. they, they have 20 years for each of them that's a really good deal um it wouldn't it just be absurd just at face value if the mariners just like ran it back like this like they got to trade one of these guys, right? Like, that would be crazy if they don't. It That's almost why. makes too much sense that we'd be trade partners with them. It's the That's same thing I that people are saying about it. us. Like, it's the it'd be fucking crazy to run it back again. We've already talked with them multiple times on multiple guys. Duran. Did Casas. you talk to him? No, the Red Sox did, though. Like, we know that. We've seen the rumors over the last two years. So it's like, 
you've clearly both been at a point where you want something from each other. Like, is this the time where the Mariners once again, like, do you need to learn the same fucking lesson again? And you say the same thing to the Red Sox, really. How many times are you guys going to relive the same season before you realize you need to make that kind of deal? Two different guys talking to the Mariners, too. Dude, yeah, that does factor in. We that's an important way, even with most of the front office, because guys probably making the calls are the same guys who are making the calls and passing it up. So probably. it's like, I don't know. I, I, I think if, if Walker Bueller was the guy or something like that, I would. I'm not saying I like this guy. I, I would like to add multiple pitchers. I understand what Jared's saying. I understand how the Red Sox are probably going to view it. I refuse to bend the knee to the Red Sox line of thinking. Just because that's how they want to do it doesn't mean that's what I think is a good idea. I'd be fascinated to really hear what they think of what they have with Fitz, with Priester, with Dobbins, like these arms in AAA, more towards Priester and Fitz, especially with what Fitz has done down the stretch here. Even though Andrew Bailey told you before the game today, swing and miss concerns, we're working on it, we're trying to get there. Like, do they really think those guys are actual back end starters or something they can depend on? Because if they do, I have a hard time believing they're going to push Cutter out in any capacity. I have a hard time thinking that in general, but I think it's even more if they like those guys. Do we want to talk about the uh, what's up, Cutter? I was going to say Cutter onto himself doesn't bother me, and he'll look better. I like Cutter. I want him. You can't have Cutter and Pavetta. I think is the issue. You gotta get a pick one. Mm -hmm. Can't have both. Pavetta's gone. Yeah, Pavetta. No, yeah, this is this is going to be it for for Nikki Smooches. But yeah, Cutter can be part of your get to the postseason plan. I think we all agree on that. Do we want to talk about the Breslow? Yeah, the Breslow comments coming up. Have we even talked about them yet? Really? No, not really. No, someone pull those up while I talk about the the amazing uh, company that is HelloFresh. <clears throat> we all know home cooked meals are so much better for you, but you don't always have time to pull it off. But with HelloFresh, handling all the meal planning, shopping, and most of the prep, it's easier than ever to get dinner on the table quick and painless. Tyler. There's always new flavors to explore with an ever-changing menu of 50 recipes to choose from every single week. Just pick your meals and delivery date. And it's that simple. For me, it's a lifesaver. Especially tonight. I had um, baseball hour with Tony Maz and Waltham. I had to go there, six to seven. You come back. Wifey and the girls are at cheer practice, come home to an empty house. I'm like, I don't have time for all this shit. Bleep that, Jake. I'm not supposed to swear in the ads. Um, <laughs> oh, well. um, but the game's on. I don't have time to go grocery shopping. None of that. HelloFresh is a lifesaver for me. Great ingredients. Great flavor. Great convenience. That's not even their tagline. That's just me talking That's about it. Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> That's just me. You might you might want to pitch that to him. Yeah. It's me talking from the heart about HelloFresh. Um easily customize your meals with protein or veggies. I mean, for me, it's both. Love broccoli, love chicken, love fish, love steak, pork. Mm. Don't forget to check out HelloFresh Market for more delicious add-ons to jazz up your weekly deliveries. Um, and also for free breakfast for life, go to hellofresh.com slash free section 10, uh, one free breakfast item per box while the subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life. Just by going to hellofresh.com slash free section 10. It's America's number one meal kit for a reason. Shout out to HelloFresh. Thank you guys for sponsoring. Section 10. Uh, do we have the uh, the quotes ready to roll? Who's got them? Tyler. Tyler. I got them. Okay, let's roll. Okay, uh, the first big one, this was kind of just on the season outlook. You want that, or do you want to get immediately to the off-season questions? Uh, just give me, the, give me the juicy nugs. Okay. I think this is the first one that was semi-interesting here. Um, so, Breslow said the team needs to explore opportunities via trade and free agency and suggested trades are likely given a crowd of, due to a crowd of young, talented position players in AAA in the big leagues. Here's the quote. We have seen the ability to be competitive in the AL East with a young group that's really exciting, really dynamic. We got to figure out what the right pieces are to add to that. 
I think it's likely some of that comes via trade because there's only so many middle infielders and left-handed hitting outfielders we can play at any given time. Okay. The weirdest, the weirdest quote was the one where he was like, so Don Rafaela is fucking awesome. Definitely an everyday player in the big leagues. That will your guy? I don't know. I don't know, man. I think we got to see a little more from old Willier. It's like, I mean, Willier has been one of the best players on the team this year. And I love Rafaela, but I mean, dude's got like a 650 OPS. Um, great defender. Chase rate is up the ass. Um, drives Doesn't in a lot of runs. Run. I mean, he's got that clutch gene. You need a big hit, you go to Sedan. Um, for a guy that you look at the OPS, you're like, this guy does not do damage. He's got double digit homers. What he's what's he got? Like 15, 16 homers? Less than that. It's probably around it, it's what low low double digits, probably. I thought it was exactly fifteen. Was it fifteen? Bubba? Oh, it's fifteen, yeah. Yeah. 15. He's got fifteen wow. homers. Like I fucking said, he's got hundred and thirty RBIs. RBIs. Um he's been thrown out nine times stealing bags. Oh my. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I don't know. I, I, I don't like the central message of that quote was, well, we know what Sedan Rafaela is. I'm not really sure about this Willier guy. Like, do Which we really crazy. know what, what Sedan is yet? I feel like we I don't. Think it's a complete 180 to what they started pitching you in December, too, which was, hey, we're not going to go after any bats. We got this Willier Abreu cat. You guys really need to start talking about him. They were the ones who were pushing Willier before the season. So it's weird. He went out, outperformed anyone's expectations. And then they're like, eh, this guy kind of sucked. They both outperformed expectations. Like, even sure, but for the what... team specifically was pushing Willier. That's why it's weird to, at the end of the season, be like, we're all set. Well, also, Willier is even better than I thought he would. I already thought he would be good, but he's even better than right. I thought he would be. Whereas, like, Rafaela, I don't know what to make of him. You know, he was hitting at all levels at the minor league level, but everyone was kind of just like, yeah, don't get used to it. Like, that's not who he's going to be and who he is. And he came up here and that's just not who he is. Um, but it's just it's it's so strange. Like, that's why I think the Sedan Rafaela profile isn't finished yet. I th I think he's shown flashes of like he could be a nice like number seven hitter it's like he makes the lineup a little bit longer he can and maybe not hitting six but he can do some damage in that uh that bottom third of the lineup and not like i don't know i i don't know what i feel he makes me if he comes up in a big spot i don't care if he's like oh for his last 17 i'm like he's probably gonna come through here like his numbers with the bases loaded he hits like 560 with the bases it's loaded like all you have to do is tell him hey the game's on the line or it's a big spot and he comes through the sedan thing and we've said it during the course of this season i swear anytime i see like red sox stats tweet about him that we're not watching the same guy i feel like when i'm really locked in on a rafaela at bat and it matters like he delivers i know that's not true he but just in him. terms of an eye test, I'm like, yeah, he. there's no way he can have this bad of a chase rate, strike out this much. We have this many question marks about him, but I still feel pretty solid when he's up there. Having said that, though, I, I wanted to say the exact quote that you were talking about, Jared, because it is kind of eye opening. And I do agree that this Breslow quote was like, really? We're going to feel that. Yeah, it's an odd one. Yeah. He goes a year ago. We would have asked, what is Sedan? What is David Hamilton? The answer was we weren't sure. We'll find out. But I think the answer now pretty definitively is that they're good major league players. I'm like, the, I'm, no. I'm just, concerned that David Hamilton was a part of the quote. Like, David Hamilton. I, I, no. Dude, I haven't thought of him in a while. I forgot I mean, he was I mean, a part of the team. Like, he can't <laughs> be a major part of what we've got expected, going on. Obviously better than we expected, but, like, the fact that he's even in the quote is is Concerning. It, the word is concerning. Like, if you think, like, like hey, Hamilton. we've got Rafaela, we've got David Hamilton, like, we're, We're going to fucking roll next year. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah. What? And I we wonder... know these guys are really good. We, they, definitively, I think we can all agree. Yeah. I did love how it was kind of pitched like that. We all know these guys yeah. are all-star caliber Yeah, players. like, there's like, no on. one here sitting there saying that David Hamilton isn't the next A-Rod. Like, when I, see, <laughs> when I see David Hamilton, I'm thinking Barry Larkin. Like, I'm thinking, you know, prime Troy Tulowitzki. 
Uh, you all see it though. Like I don't know why I'm. I have to say it out loud. Like you guys, you guys know. You guys know. The fact I even have to say this publicly <laughs> is absurd. But yeah. we all agree on this. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. David I'm, Hamilton fucking rules, and I don't like the tone of this, this conversation. But it's, it's but more, David this Hamilton. This isn't even about is a, David is a, Hamilton. Is a, it's just that he came up, and this is crazy. Yeah. I, I think a, they just he's a nice as... complimentary bench player. Like if David <laughs> Hamilton is a big part of what you've got going on, we're fucked. Get used to being a fucking five hundred or worse and missing the playoffs again. Would it shock yeah. me though if it's like something like him and a Von Grissom platoon to open next year at second base if they feel like Campbell's not ready? That wouldn't. Well, shock definitely me. not after reading that. Well, yeah, no, you know, he's, he's starting. Clearly, he's your, clearly he's, core your star. the way he's 155 games next year. Yeah, All Star game started too. Yeah, listen, I, I've never been the biggest <laughs> David Hamilton guy, but you could tell Core really did appreciate what he did on the base pass. Well, I and that appreciate element of the him team too. Died. That element of the team did die after he went down, and I do think it factored into how they slumped in the way that when they Hamilton did. goes, the Sox go, baby. I mean, that's <laughs> I, I think <laughs> with, <laughs> we've been saying it all season. Yeah, right us. yeah. I mean, we're joking, but during the like the winning times in the middle of the season, David Hamilton wasn't was not a part of it. Like they moved oh, to he the was top cooking. of the order. Like he was our number two. <laughs> It was that, that again, last stretch. Was not like taking, not oh, yeah. crapping on the guy, not taking away anything that he contributed this year. Like he, he helped. He was a net oh, well, yeah. positive. But where I, I, I don't want my general manager talking about we're good next year because we got this guy, and it's like. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Maybe like, where I would talk about I feel like that I'm reading they were, into this way too much. No, no, no. Where no, I we, would, we are, but it's still funny. It's like David I Hamilton, think the, reason, the solution. That's his nickname. Yeah. The reason you talk about and single those two guys out is David Hamilton was supposed to be triple, triple A, quadruple A depth coming into the season. Say Don mm -hmm. Rafael was supposed to be your center fucking fielder. Mm -hmm. Neither of those guys played either of those positions this year because of all the injuries and they had to step up. I do think if you were to talk about this team in any sort of positive light, mm -hmm. they're like the second and third names I would draw from if I were talking about the offense. And I'd that argue was, Raffaella, you crazy. entered spring training. He was fighting for that job all camp. That was like the main storyline. Would he actually make the team? You know, we had to hear from Alex Cora that he was even going to have the opportunity to try and make the team. And that was major news at that time. I think with Raffaella, the reason you hear Breslow partially mentioning it, look at the investment he made in him. It's like, this guy, I paid him. I paid him. I gave him a contract. He's going to be here. So, like, you know, moving that money around will not be easy because I do think if you look around the industry, most of them look at that contract and we're pretty surprised by it. They're like, I would have probably waited on that. I think with Willie or Abreu, they look at it and to them, he is the easier player in their eyes to replace if they envision Rafael as a guy who's going to be in center field because Roman Anthony could move to right field and handle that position. And they say, all right, Duran, go play left field. I think with Abreu as well, as much as I do like the player and I like him a lot. They'd probably tell you, we don't know that he's more than a platoon player. Wow. Doesn't hit lefties. That, yeah, I mean, they, they he made, still hasn't hit lefties a, yet. It was such a big deal when he hit that home run in Texas off the lefty. <laughs> they were like, what? He burst into tears. Obviously, he had stuff going off the field, but he's a 3 2 war, uh, 117 OPS plus. He would be one of the front runners, if not the front runner for rookie of the year, if the writers weren't paid by the team to not vote <laughs> for guys who can't get them picks. Um, I like nothing more you can say about the guy. He showed up, he was awesome all year. Got to get rid of him. <laughs> get him out of here. I like Rafaela. Rafaela thing. I just want to touch up on real quick, and we had kind of alluded to this already, but I just wanted to see the stats. I'm a batting average guy. Whatever. Like I'm the worst. Who's who cares? Uh, innings one through three. His average was 189 this year. Four through six, two thirty, two thirty five, seven through nine. He's a 300 hitter. <laughs> It's like that doesn't happen for rookies ever. And I think that's another part of the Rafaela story where it's like he's barely played more than 162 games in his career so far. It's hard to have any kind of like, oh, OK, well, obviously he's going to be this. Obviously, he's going to be that. It's it's eye opening enough that he is what he is in the field already and that he is what he is in clutch situations already. So I'm not really anytime I see negativity around Rafael, I'm like, hey. What did you expect this year? Like, I, I don't know what you expected this season that was really going to blow you away consistently at the plate. I feel like he's given us more reason to be optimistic than anything else. You also got, because uh, I know Tyler, anyone who makes over minimum wage is like, that contract, you can't touch. It's not like an eight-year, <laughs> $50 million contract. Trade him. Yes. Not 10 a year. No. I, it's, I understand the industry did agree with what Tyler said, but again, it's an eight-year, $50 million yeah. contract. Can't move. I think you're fine. Can't move it. 
I do think with Rafael, it's weird though, because you have this conversation about Willie or Abreu, who's like this league average bat that gives you, I think he's going to win the gold glove in right field. I think he is that guy. Like if you're going to kind of go down that list and chorus campaigning for him, I gave you the metrics last episode. You know, we're talking about a guy in Rafael. He's 21% below league average as a hitter this year. Like he, Willie or Abreu is an above average bat. And yes, Rafael had it hard. He was going between short and center. But I think that's the difference. Like if you didn't have that contract tied up, it would be a pretty easy equation for me who I'd try to move. I don't think also if you had Rafaela, he's someone you're getting as much value as you're getting for Willie or Abreu. Right. And like the whole thing with like trading Rafael, it's like, what are you getting besides salary relief? Like it's like you're not going to get a huge return. And you're also trading one of the only right handed bats that you have. And the best fielder you have. Yeah. Well, now, dance. you know, story it short, but like still, he's the best outfielder you have by far. Dancing prevention. around the return. Dancing around it. Hmm? The hmm. one guy who's going to get you the most return. No one in the fucking city wants to say it. No, I'm not. I'm not uh, avoiding that. No, I'm just, I'm specifically talking about Rafael. Sure. Bre- Breslow said left handed hitting outfielders. I will say, felt like Cora. And maybe this will be a very interesting kind of butting of heads because I'd love to hear where he lies on it. Cora made a point once again over the last couple of days to say, you know, while he explains why he feels the need to play Duran every fucking single day, even though his legs are clearly tired and he went a month without stealing a bag. Jaron wants to play. Awesome for him. Sit down. Um, when you're talking <laughs> he's, he's about Jaron Duran, he's, he's just not, he's not going to sit like he's going to at this yeah, point, the, obviously he's playing the last three games. Oh, yeah, at this point, but when he was in a rut for weeks at a time, it was like, all right, the guy's not stealing bags anymore. You need that kind of thing from him. Maybe a day off wouldn't hurt him that badly. Uh, but to make the point that, hey, we need a leader. We need someone to go out there and kind of set that tone and be that guy. Duran's been that guy and he's been outstanding at it. That's a very powerful thing to say multiple point or multiple points during the season this year and then flip him. Like if you're building him up as this leader, core views him as that in his clubhouse and then you flip him, it's a pretty big switch up cuz clearly he's saying beyond Rafi, someone needs to be that kind of guy and I trust Duran to be that. He didn't pick Casas and you can say what you will, maybe it's cuz he was out oh, for the shit. year or whatever it may be. <laughs> he leaned into him. Not playing is tough there. Yeah, it's like this guy's mental swings are incredible. Honestly, like we watch a lot of the post games, Tyler, I don't think you miss any of them because this is your entire life. I don't think Alex Cora has spoken more highly of anybody, even close second, third, fourth, or fifth than he has of Jaron Duran. <laughs> like the the things he said this season about Jaron Duran, and he's kind of gone out of his way. I feel like there's questions that aren't even about Duran. And he's like, by the way, have I mentioned how awesome Jaron Duran is and how much he's mattered to this team and, and you know, actually been like a clubhouse guy and been one of the best teammates uh, on the Red Sox and, and, you know, this stretch of missing the playoffs. It's that stuff does matter a lot. And Cole, you alluded to it last episode. If they are going to give Cora more of a say in personnel moves and, and genuinely lean on him for advice and, and what they should do, which jury's still out on if that's actually the case, I'd be stunned. I'd be so stunned if Jaron Duran was a guy that was moved after what he did this year. Of course, you have to like build up your value to then like bring things back in return, obviously. But it just seems like that's one of the guys that you want to be a part of this Red Sox you know, uh, team or whatever, this Red Sox uh, era coming up, hopefully, that can make the playoffs consistently. Jaron being a part of that would feel right. You want him gone. <laughs> no, it, 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 we're talking value You're taking here. the call. We're, we're like these yeah, other Yeah, I'm guys sure they're taking calls on everybody, right? I'm sure they're taking calls on everybody. But, like, I'd be stunned if they just, like, turned down any conversation, even with Anthony or any of those dudes. It, it so much depends on that. Like, I would, and you know, go into another quote, right, in this Craig Breslow article, because he was asked about what was going to happen with Roman Anthony and what was going to happen with Christian Campbell, and he didn't shut the door on either one of them. You know, he made the point to say, all right, well, you know, we have plans for them this offseason. Let's see where they go. This was the the quote itself. Our goal come opening day is to have the best 26 players we can on the roster. Hey, the door's not shut. Those are great. So to me, like, Make a decision on what you want to do about Roman Anthony in the next month. If you think he's that special, you think he's going to be this long-term superstar and he's ready to go come opening day. Hey, if you want to give him an extension, be my guest. Hey, you you can add him with a 40 man, do the Jack Saturio thing, whatever, but it's an option. Oh, I mean, don't do that until (laughs) February, but uh, when it comes to Duran, I feel like we've been given a gift in terms of like, we've never seen a 28 year old completely reinvent himself at this stage of his 
career. I can't think of a single guy. Uh, on baseball reference, he's 10 career war, 8.7 this year. It's his fourth season. So three years, he put up a 1-3 war. I feel like we've been given a gift. And if they're already saying, like, we have no plans to extend this guy, I, it doesn't even make sense to keep him if you're only going to keep him until he's going to walk. If you're just going to do the exact Jacoby Ellsbury thing, and he's going to be playing left, which we all agree is probably going to happen. Yeah. I, it seems like the easiest decision ever, but I he had a great year. Like, I'm not saying, like, oh, thanks for the great year. Get the fuck out. We're talking value here. We all agree no one else has nearly that value. It seems like a super easy decision to make. But if you've been waiting this long to get to the playoffs and you need guys like this to get to the playoffs, then just, like, trade Do one you? of them off. I think so. I think you this would need Jared three Durant. him on the team. You haven't made the playoffs any of the years. No, that's I know. This clearly, I mean, it's a brand new year. Obviously, this is a way different year than the other years. Like, obviously, he's sure, you know, found a new him. version of himself. No, of course. But I, I still think this is a version of Jaron Duran that he can duplicate. Like, I don't think this is gonna, we're just going to oh. look back at oh, only 2024. I think he can consistently give you this level of production. I think it would be insane to ask for this level of production from any player ever again. Like, it's a historic season in terms of the benchmarks he had. I think it would be genuinely insane. For him still, a, a, a lot of what he's done is because of the tools he has and his durability, like being able to play what he's going to play in 160 games. The defense mm -hmm. isn't going anywhere. The speed will deteriorate over time, but he's going to be right. a good defender, at least for the next couple of seasons. And say what you will. You go back to a year ago. Say it. His, his OPS was 828. This mm -hmm. year, it's 838. And he, it's like he's 129 OPS He's be one of the top doubles guys every year. Like, there's no way that Jaron Duran isn't a top doubles guy like every single season. Doubles for sure. And we've seen the changes with the power, right? Like steals. he's altered his mechanics. Oh, he's now yeah. I mean, has the leg kick. First home runs, not steals. Like, he should be. Oh, yeah. No. He, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, he's not, he's not going to be here to hit bombs. Like, it, you know, the speed, no, the electricity, if, like all of that. Like he hit 21 this year. If that goes back down to 10, because his previous, he'd never hit double digit home runs before this year. If it goes back down to 10, yeah, but I feel like that kills a lot of his value. If he's but, leading the, the league in doubles and triples and, you know, giving you that electricity and being a guy that that Cora loves, that the team loves like that. He's got a lot of value. Of course, that's been it, it does. It does kind of benefit your point. Obviously, if his value is huge, then you could get something. I, I get that's what it's, I'm it's, saying. It's, it's but it's both sides of it. It's like, all right, do we do we yeah. want to benefit from the value and have that help us get to the playoffs? Or do we want to try to bring something back uh, that the team might need, considering that outfielder is a surplus for the Red Sox? I get it. But I don't know. It just feels like you're kind of going backwards with the message you're trying to send if you trade someone like Jaron Duran, I, I don't I don't like what that means for like the vibes of the club and and, uh, you know, what it means for potentially their chances of making in the playoffs next year and beyond. If like, I, there's no one that if they trade at all, 26 guys, no, I they should do that. That'd be crazy. nearly as bad as when they traded the best player any of us have ever seen. You know what I mean? Like, it will always come back to that for me. Like Jaron Duran's not as good as Mookie Betts. If, if the Dodgers want to reverse that right He's now. He's way better, dude. <laughs> Today. But the last guy, to your point, the last guy Cora spoke about this highly that I can remember, the Red Sox just let walk out the door, and that was Xander. Just he let got him an walk. extension. He got an extension beforehand, so he I'm did get a second contract here. year building up. Yeah. When he was of course. Like the year he was leaving. Cora said all the same things. I, I did like hearing Cora say, like, this should be the last year of this. He basically said that in the, in the I'm paraphrasing in the post game today. But, you know, that's all he thinks about. Like, all he thinks about is I can't fucking wait to finally manage a postseason team again. 2021, by the start of next year, I just did the math. It's going to be four years since they made the playoffs. Like, that's crazy. That should never happen here, especially with somebody like Alex Cora leading the charge. So. I, I, I want to sense the urgency and it's kind of our job to overreact to quotes and that's all we're going to be doing off season. But even like reading more of these quotes, I'm like, I don't like it. I, I don't like the sound, you know, <laughs> in terms of like the lead in, I just don't, it's not super promising. And it's I, overreaction city. This is, you know, the next month, two months, that's all it's going to be. But, you know, the more quotes we got out of this McAdam piece, the more I'm like, Damn, I don't know if the urgency is there. It doesn't feel like it. Last year at this time, they were promising us the world. So I'd rather them oh, do yeah. this than be Oh, like, no, same, same. We're yeah, signing in, in comparison. We're trading for Soto. We're signing Yamamoto. We're getting all the O's. All of them are coming in <laughs> to Boston. Uh, I'm taking, uh, personally, I, I'm going underdog fantasy. I'm entering promo code mm. Jared. I'm yeah. taking 
the higher on amount of times I'm pissed the fuck off by this off season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You already, you're that. already there. You're, you're already like at a point where you're bracing yourself for disappointment this winter. What else? No reason not to, you? right? Yeah, there's no reason not to. There's no reason to not brace yourself for disappointment. Yeah, well, based on on like what what. Why would we be super confident going into the offseason? Outside know. of the guys that are coming. Like, I, I'm, I'm pumped for those dudes. I don't know if super confident is where I'm at either, but I'm definitely not bracing myself for disappointment. I think I'm more uh, intrigued by the possibilities. Uh, ever, ever prepared to be let down. Yeah, I'm I always, I, I'm, I'm definitely at. always prepared to be let down, but I think I, I, the conversation that we had earlier in the show about how not every team has an ace. There's only so many aces in the game. And then there's only so many aces that are in the game that are going to be available. Like that number is very small. Like I'm not expecting an ace. But I am kind of looking at like. The game one, like if the Red Sox are to make the playoffs next year, the game one starter is yeah, not on the team right now. No. That's where they I'm would at. probably. Potentially say yes, though. Game well, they, one of the season or of the playoffs? Oh, playoffs, playoffs. Playoffs. But I don't know what Jared meant. Uh, I already envisioned the uh, the Jeff Passan tweet where it was like, the Red Sox and Mariners have struck a deal finally. Tristan Casas for Brian Wu. And I break my fucking monitor over my knee. Like, <laughs> I, that's exactly what the trade's going to be. And Tyler knows it. It, it does feel like it would be something like that, though. It really <laughs> And that would fucking it. suck. That would be an awful trade. And listen, like Brian Wu's had a really good year. I'm not trying to tell you. He like, leaves you know, every start hurt. Every Don't start. crap on the it's guy. That, and it, the K per nine is a 7.2. Like, he's not, it's not ace stuff to me. It's not Tyler's top of the rotation. Just, if your K per nine <laughs> is not over 11, Tyler no, wants nothing to do. With it's you. not even to that. I mean, 7.2 is King. underwhelming. I don't exactly. disagree, but I've right, never heard Tyler go, and let me tell you this about a pitcher, and it not be Kate. <laughs> <laughs> it's always Kate for now. Or the fifth. They got to give fifth well, okay, love. That's what it is. It next. goes right in. It goes yeah. hand in hand. Yeah. Fifth's 352. I, I care much less about fit because there's like certain years where a guy will have like a fucking 490 FIP. And then he finishes mm. the year with a 3.11 ERA, and it's like, yeah, but the FIP was 4.90. It's like, okay, but he finished the year with a 3.11. Right. Like it, the if whole it, season. If it's May, and we're talking FIP, fine. But you're like, yeah, but like, you know, it's gonna get worse. When in Christmas, like his fucking season's <laughs> over. Season's over. It's a 3.11. <laughs> fucking fucking winter ball. Like, when yeah. is this gonna go it's down? Fucking, it, it's season's over. It's a 3.11. I don't care that the FIP is 4.90. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, I I also I will pay attention to strikeouts per nine if we're talking aces. Yeah, if we're talking no if we're talking frontline guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not That's saying why we don't want Corbin Burns. No, it's just it's uh, T Dog. It's his go to. I, yeah. I respect that he's got. It's like every pitcher's got his pitches. He's got his stats. There's things mm-hmm. though, like you what he's a hundredth percentile for walk percentage. Like talk about picking up where Logan Gilbert was. It's like all right, well, I'm just never going to walk anyone. That changes it, and you know you can look at his baseball savant page. There's a good amount of red there. And at 24 years old, do you think he comes in and he works for Andrew Bailey and they find something like? Maybe. I, I don't know. I, maybe it was a little aggressive to be like, I'd kill myself if they traded for Brian Wu. <laughs> but if you're going to trade Tristan Costas, maybe I, I overreacted want, here. It was a little aggressive because it is a young arm with a lot of potential. But I'd want something I feel a little bit more certain in. And I feel more certain in the top of the rotation guys for the Mariners. We should do the uh, kill sure. myself scale, the mm. KMS. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> if I this guy I'd... comes back for Tristan Costas, will you kill yourself? I said I'd break my monitor over my knee. Tyler was like, I'm ending it all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm jumping done. off the Zacrum tomorrow. <laughs> the Zacrum. Uh, Tanner Hogg's caper nine. I'm looking at 7.8, Tyler. You think he stinks? It's mm, below seven blows. in the second half. I think it's concerning. I think it points to some aggression. <laughs> you think it's concerning? <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, 331 fifth, though. Yeah, and I think you start to dive into some stuff with Hauk, right? Like, he reshaped how he pitched in the second half in a major way. You go back to so August serious. 9th. He right? goes right like, into it. <laughs> exactly. And so what that means is the following. I fucking hate you guys. Holy He's God. the best. Oh, you're the best, man. You're but the like, best. 
Okay, just for help, just because I want to get this off my chest because it's been bothering me. <laughs> I know you do. You always do. You always got to get it up. There you go. His sinker Don't usage, out. April, 30%. May, 30%. June, 31%. July, 28%. August, 36%. September, 41%. So that was the adjustment on his part. You go back to the August 9th start against the Astros. That was after the Rangers kicked his teeth in. It was a 322 ERA, 406 FIP. He kind of got his season back under control at that point. 6.3K per nine, 2.6 walk per nine. If you look at qualified starters, there's no one with a K per nine that's, you know, lower than six, but that's really kind of the floor and the bottom. There's just not many top tier starters that live in that area. I think he is better than that. I think if you get some fusion of the first half and the second half, I just think it's somewhere in the middle more than, hey, first half Hulk is what he really is. Because I think there was an adjustment from hitters to some degree, but who knows? Maybe there's another ceiling where he can throw that slider with more consistency and get the whiffs he once did. But that's part of the reason why I do look at Hulk and I say, Feel very good about him being a number three, maybe a number two. Brian Woos, there's things to like there. I could no doubt. But if we trade Casas for him, I, like I said, I'm gonna break my monitor. Yeah, yeah. But I could would, you uh, make the argument? Cole. Like I, I'm not trying to make myself. I'm not trying to, to contradict Casas myself so here. <laughs> um, but like you look at Wu, could you argue he's kind of like the pitcher version of Tristan Casas? Uh, no. Where are you going with there? I don't. Yeah, I don't know. A guy in Brian Wu who's 24 years old. He's coming off a season right now. Or say what you will about the metrics. He's outpitched everybody on his staff. He's been better than George Kirby. He's the biggest Wu guy in the league. <laughs> I've flipped. I'm completely <laughs> on his side now. But I don't know. Like I'm just trying to play that conversation out in my head. A guy with a ton of control um, who's gone in, in this year. He's made, what, 21 starts with a sub-3 ERA or right around a 3 ERA. Like you could see where the Mariners would sit there and hold you and be like, all right, well, this is a young guy who's already shown he can dominate close to a full season, similar to how Tristan Casas dominated close to a full season. Obviously, Casas' stock is at a little bit of a hit right now, but he's not a free agent until he's 20, till 2030. Welcome to Boston, Brian Wu. There he is. <laughs> Let's go. He's coming. <laughs> The Get fucking the the Let's do Wu, it. It the up. Wu train clan. He's coming on down to Boston. Brian Wu, your game one starter for the division series 2025. You know him, you love him. <laughs> yep, that's it. I also want to be clear. If they trade for Brian Wu, I'm not going to be furious. If they trade Casa specifically for Wu, mm. I will be furious. Tyler is all for it, though. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't say I'm all for it. I want more. I shoot higher. But, like, it's also hard for me to sit here and be like, like, you can make the case with George Kirby. There's things to be concerned about there as well. I think real but Kirby real makes quick, 32 though, starts. Well, I was big, all right. That's a good little transition that you didn't even know. Um, while we're on the starters. Boom. <laughs> I don't know why I've adopted doing that. <laughs> the field goal is good. Uh, <laughs> while we're on the starters, I think the assumption that, and I'm, I'm sure they're not just like assuming this, but the assumption that Crawford, Bayo, and Hout can give you 30 starts again next year is a big assumption. That's a good point, Looking Steve. back, Anything since they won better. the World Series in 2018, mm -hmm. there's only been one season where they've had three starters make 30 starts. It was 2021 with Evaldi, Erod, and Nick Pavetta. Uh, Nick Pivetta is the only guy I think that's on this list twice. He did it in 21 and in 2022. Nobody did it last year. So, you know, obviously you're, you're getting Giolito back. What you do with some other guys that you want to fill in there, whoever you bring in, the assumption they're all going to just, you know, be able to give you 30 starts. And it's not like, I mean, the, the 014, that's one of my favorite stats ever that all five guys made 30 starts. That's just like never going to happen again for this team. But I hope they're aware that it's going to be extremely rare if these three guys do that again next year. Jerry? I want Shane Bieber. All right. Bieber and woo. Welcome to the club. Bieber, fever. Can we do the sound again? <laughs> 2020 Cy Young Award winner. Shane Bieber, welcome to the Boston Red Sox. We're just fixing the Sox rotation, and the season's not even over yet. Look at this. We just added Brian Wu via trade, Shane Bieber <laughs> via free agency. Yes, Tyler. I like Shane Bieber. Okay. What's the K per nine? Uh, uh, okay. it's, it's very Corbin Burns-ish where it's been going down, but he was also hurt. 
His FIP though? Yeah, what's his FIP? Last year, so it was a 380 ERA in 2023. It was a mm-hmm. 387 FIP. You go oh, the year beautiful. before, it's 288, that's 287. Perfect. That's a perfect FIP for his ERA. Love it. What yep. I will say with Shane Bieber and Walker Oh, uh, you Mueller, about to crap on him? <laughs> no. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, what do you got? Both have sticky stuff merchant allegations. Oh, oh see so you crapping on him. All right. I'm just stating something. No, well, don't state that. Of the program. Yeah, he, uh, you know, the second that Shane Bieber signs with the Boston Red Sox, his first interview is going to be on Section 10, and that's now in jeopardy because of Tyler's <laughs> accusations that are baseless, by the way. Um, luckily, our friendship is very strong, so I think I can, much like I have to do with many other players, hey, I know Tyler sucks, but, you know, you got to come on the podcast, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying he did do this. Yeah. Type of stuff. I'm yeah, just saying yeah, that's no, a I'll, thing I'll come on discuss. the podcast just as long as Tyler's not there is like pretty much what we everybody says. We can't have a says. conversation. We can't address things. Bobby Dalbeck. Bobby Dalbeck. <laughs> he wishes stick, sticky stuff would fix him. Oh, he would God. love anything to fix him. Oh, come yes. on. Oh, yeah. God. No. Like it got so personal. Yeah, like I why? I don't get it. Like he just player. he likes who he likes and he doesn't like who he doesn't like, but I don't understand like the whole like at least when I don't like players, it's because they're fucking assholes. Right. Like they they they'll throw the first punch. I just I throw the last one, usually. That's how that goes. <laughs> um, it's as if Bobby did something to Tyler, which obviously never happened. It would never happen. He's too nice of a guy. Yeah. He would probably uh, give him go that far. He would give him what did he do? Certain people do not want to speak or interact. I'm willing to have the conversation. Yeah, that's because personal. you're a fucking dickhead. You, what? Because I said he, he's not good at baseball. Uh, What's the, you don't. You take it so much farther. Yeah, than you. you yeah. Yeah. What have Something I ever personally said about him? You just did. That's what got that you. He, I suspension. wish he had something that made him a good baseball player. He is nah, a good baseball if, player. If we had a montage of the things you said about Dalbuck this year, yeah. it's very bad. Yeah. Coley branded Trevor Story is a traitor that tried to throw his team under the bus in Colorado. <laughs> That's uh, just, what I'm just, does anyone just, disagree with me? And we're talking Trevor Story, the guy who the fucking entire clubhouse bows at him as their leader and the most respected guy. Again, this is they got eliminated in playoffs for the third straight year. Like we're clearly a team full of brain dead idiots like that. I'm yeah. not even stating right or wrong. I'm just check the receipts. All things considered, I think I'm handling this very well because I. I remember, I don't know if you remember Coley, but after they got eliminated by the Astros in 2017, I wanted to blow the whole thing up. <laughs> I was like, they won the division back to back years. They got wow. eliminated by Houston in the division series. Who They were cheating, by the way. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, not us. No, not us. The Astros were cheating. Um, and I was just like, you got to blow this fucking thing up. Like this team, this group just can't win. Do I feel that way about this group? Absolutely. Um, (laughs) But same thing. There was one specific guy. Do you remember that you wanted to bring in an 18? Exactly one guy. Uh, John Carlos Stanton. Very same. No, there was two guys. There was two guys. Ah, Don't you dare. Yeah, that's the mass take. No, no, no. There was dedicated to John. There was two guys. And the other guy is an even worse was it Cole? No, it was Marcelo Zuna. Oh, oh right, right. Oh, yeah, people were I, we, people wanted Ozuna for like three straight years in Boston. Yeah. yeah. Yep. We are people. Mm-hmm. I mean, no, Ozuna raked. He was just a really bad person. Yeah. Uh, mm. Still the case. Still raked, still bad. If you could, so going back to thinking about this, mm-hmm. going back to 2017, making I, it today. I would still you keep that team together. Person, Sure, no, no <laughs> but Bold. under that same thought, because you hated that team like you hate this team, mm. what one player like Stanton, who would you like to add in the league if you I, could just add one guy? I don't, I don't, I don't hate this team. I just know that this team can't win. Sure, um, they're just not very good. It's a, like a lot of four A guys. There's, yeah, this team is made up of four A guys, pretty much. Um, a lot of it, yeah. If there's one guy, 
like does like it have to be realistic attainable. obviously not like otani like reasonably yeah. attainable yeah yeah because stanton was that like that could have happened oh he was gone he was absolutely it was right when jeter got there everyone knew he was gone yeah if there's one guy that i could reasonably pluck from any team i mean it's still juan soto Like that would be, and I know that we need an ace or a frontline guy and all that shit. But if I can only make one big offseason move, it's still Juan Soto. Like I think that the the impact, and we we ha- we trust me. If you if you listen to the last episode, I know that we beat the shit out of this subject. <laughs> but the one thing that we didn't mention is, and this is a point that my dad texted me after and was like i was waiting for you to make this point you never did you fucking idiot but um <laughs> the fact if juan soto came here that would make other players be like oh the red Sox are cool again like I- I'll-, I'll go there play with juan soto fuck yeah like right now i mean we, we couldn't even get zach eflin to think the red Sox were cool zach eflin or he- zach montgomery eflin. He was like, ah, oh, the taxes you know montgomery like- was begging to come here i don't know if that's the same Apparently, he didn't even ask. They never even got to the point of getting a real offer on the table because he didn't think they were contenders. Well, he was right. And he was correct. Yeah, he was yeah. correct. He nailed it. Yeah. Well, he's the sucks. Red Sox were, had four years waiting for him. Yeah. Well, good thing. Good thing that he thought that there were better opportunities elsewhere because he fucking blows. They they yeah. would have missed the playoffs by 20 games if he was on this team. <laughs> you think with a regular believe. spring training, he sucks? Huh? You think with a regular spring training, he still would have sucked? Yeah. No. I don't. Uh, I do. There's no. There's no way to know. But yeah, he. I don't think he would have been this bad. No, he would have. I sucked. also don't believe uh, Red Sox contract offers that aren't signed. The only reason I believe it because this is Boris trying to piss on Montgomery for all the shit he's talked, and Boris is like, "Fuck you! I'm just gonna put the real info out. Go ahead. Good luck. Go try to deny it." Mm. He's just yeah. feeding it to Heyman. I, I mean, wish I you hoping. would feed me some blue moons. Because mm-hmm. some beers can say, "Don't make that." No, some beers can I say that they're that. brewed for baseball, but only Blue Moon is brewed by baseball. Beer and baseball, they just go together. No beer goes better than the one that was literally born in a ballpark. Blue Moon was created at Coors Field in Denver, Colorado. It's the natural choice for opening day and all season long. I can't wait to have some Blue Moons this weekend. Uh, what am I doing this weekend? I'll be at Fenway on Sunday. You coming, Steve? Hell yeah, brother. You coming on Sunday, Tyler? No. No. You're not. I have deadlines this weekend. So. I have deadlines. Me and Sorry, me. I have a job. <laughs> We're all unemployed. <laughs> Do you guys want to write the articles for me or not? Yeah, it's super Definitely easy. Not. I'm the I'm the best writer in the world. You, you probably yeah. are better than me. I'll tip my cap. Also, same. Yeah, not wrong. I will tip my cap to both of you. Steve, I'll even give it to you. No, Steve can't yeah, write. He sucks. I barely write. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> barely ever did that. Yeah. From its refreshing flavor with Valencia orange peel for a subtle sweetness and hints of coriander. Blue Moon Belgian style wheat ale is a one of a kind beer that's made brighter. It's carefully crafted and full flavored with refreshing notes and a smooth, creamy finish. Blue Moon is brewed by baseball to give you a dose of nostalgia and get you excited for the new season. Why strike out with the same old beer when you can get something that is one of a kind? It's bold flavor, bright explosion of color, and iconic orange slice ritual guarantees a one of a kind beer experience that is perfect for spring weather. Best served with its signature orange garnish to showcase its beautiful hazy color. A beer this good only comes around once in a blue moon but you can enjoy it all season long bring the ballpark to you with blue moon belgian style wheat ale it's a one of a kind every time get blue moon delivered by visiting get.bluemoonbeer.com slash jared to see your delivery options that is get.bluemoonbeer.com slash jared blue moon made brighter celebrate responsibly blue moon brewing company golden colorado um suck one yeah and suck one Well, call it, call it, call it, call it, call it, call it. So the reason I bring up the the Stanton point is because that whole off season, I badgered you into please looking into Julio Dong Martinez. That uh, feels like an exaggeration. I knew that he was good. I just it's not that you didn't know he wasn't. Jerry only watches one team. Everyone knows that about Jared Grabus. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I was trying to get you off your love affair for more realistic, potentially better options. 
You also have to remember that Stanton was coming off his 60 home run season or 59 home run season. I was like, yeah, not backward, brother. Yeah, I was like, I would love to see someone try to hit 60 home runs at Fenway Park this year. I feel like that's the type of guy that we need in the middle of this batting order. I mean, Stanton's tried uh, down the stretch in 21. He definitely tried. But what if I could tell you, Mm -hmm. yeah, Mm -hmm. there's a player out there Mm -hmm. who's going to cost half of what Juan Soto is going to get in mm-hmm. free agency this year. $300 million? You, you want Pete Alonzo? What if I, no, what if no, I told you he plays agent. for the team? What if I told you he's a better fielder? What if I told you he's right-handed? What if I told you the team that gave him this contract had their owner fucking die and has been looking to shed salary since last year? Oh, what if Fernando I told Tati you they had an G. ace pitcher that was coming up next year that they wanted to retain after they just traded all Dylan of the Cease. players they got for Juan Soto for and Dylan Cease. What if I told you this, not last year, not two years ago, was actually the correct year to trade for Fernando Tatis Jr.? What if I told you that, Jared? Uh, I would love Fernando Tatis Jr. on this baseball team, but I don't tickle my balls like that, Coley, because I... I'm a I'm a day one Tatis guy. I love that he took steroids. Um, I love Allegedly. everything. No, he took them. <laughs> according I mean, to him, it's according to him. He got a bad haircut. All right, pal. He, no, he had ringworm. <laughs> no sympathy. Sure. Yeah. It, it did yeah. He had ringworm. Times. Yeah. Either way, um, I love the guy. I yes, that would make me very happy if if the Red Sox did that. Yeah. I mean, what's his, what age season would he be going into? 26. He, he's 26. younger by a couple weeks. Uh, no, excuse me. He's younger by a lot. No, a lot. He's younger than Juan Soto. Yeah. Jake, call uh, <laughs> Preller. Preller. Get yeah, Preller AJ, get AJ Preller on this podcast so we can just see where they're at. Yeah. If we can just see where they're at, then I would... Um, that was so fast, by the way. Jake was already on the phone. Yeah. That's how efficient well, he is. He's got every GM in his favorites in his contacts. Yeah. yeah the yeah, last yeah. the last time I did this, it got reported as a very serious rumor that the Red Sox <laughs> and Padres won advanced stocks. Well, for dude, the <laughs> next three months of the offseason, people would be like, I had this crazy idea. Has anyone ever thought of trading for Fernando Tatis People have been Jr. doing this with Coley's takes for years. Forever. Like, it, it happened with his basketball takes. A lot mm. back in the day, um, but yeah, people will just. I, I, you know what I think it is. I think people fall asleep listening to the ten, and then they subconsciously <laughs> absorb so, like, the I takes. Read something somewhere, and they're I like, think. "I had a dream last night that the Red Sox traded for Fernando Tatis Jr." I mean, you got to think, right? They just gave up all these prospects for Dylan Cease. They're gonna want to pay him. <laughs> they they gave two eighty to Bogarts. They gave another three hundred to Machado. They can't possibly pay all these guys, so why not? And the thing about Tatis is he's younger than Soto, and he's only going to cost about <laughs> half. He's only going to cost about half. So why don't we just? And because he's getting paid three hundred and forty million, I think is the deal. Yeah, it's not going to cost some crazy prospect package because they'll want it if you take the contract in full here we'll trade you uh for fucking uh who would they want um uh, david hamilton he's one of the <laughs> he's one of the best Dude, players on the team yeah yeah straight up yeah I mean, there's a lot i would give up here in all serious like if casas and and others went for tatis i'm in who's others though I mean, you got to think they are trying to get like cheaper at different positions. Obviously, they have Jackson Merrill. So if they wanted a Brayu, I'm in. Mm. And playing a minor league depth too. Like I'm, I'm not stopping there. I think this is an easy deal to get done. Tatis Endeavors two, three, or three, four. Oof. However the fuck you want to hit them, it would be fun. And Ugh. it would be fun. And he just for the next decade too. Yeah, they're both locked up. Like you're, you're done. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. And he's like elite, elite defensively. Like yeah, he is one of the better. Winner. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> not gold. That's he's, he's 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 incredible. Well, the I mean, issue I, I here is they're fucking. They're really good right now, and it's not like like I think last year would have been the time to strike because it's like man, we 
We dished out all this money for all this talent. It's just clearly not working. Like, it's just not working. But now, they were 50 and 50. Now they have the best record in baseball since then. And um, I think that they're they have in some... a position to go on a deep postseason run. If they end up doing that, are they going to be like, woo, we almost we made it to the World Series. Let's trade one of our best players now. <laughs> I, I if they win it all, they might be so to... poverty. They just like, Get it off. Get the money off yeah. the books. We can't live oh, like yeah. this anymore. To the Padres winning a World Series, like that might be the best thing that happens for us or for, sure. for other teams that are trying to acquire players. Yeah, we might be able to throw get Kane too out of this. Yeah, we might be able, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> might be able to get bring, bring Bogey like, back. We can't, yeah, we can't pay that guy. <laughs> <laughs> get them all. Hmm. <sighs> Who do you want? Steve? But yeah, I'm taking the higher. I'm going to underdog fantasy. I'm yeah, yeah. Coach yeah. Jared. I'm taking the higher. Down. Fernando Tatis Jr. is on the Boston Red Sox. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. J A R E D. By the way. Who who? Yeah, you I want to do. I, I want to get to the off season first and kind of do a deep dive on the wish list. Yeah, you got to sure. smell I mean, it. Once, I mean, we'll we'll have plenty of time, obviously, to do that. But mm-hmm. yeah, once we get to that point. We'll have a better feel. But I, I'm not. You guys uh, probably Coley, Tyler, maybe Jared a little bit. Probably like doing hypothetical trades more than me. It's never been my thing. I I don't really like trying to craft up. What about this, that, and the third? I, I like trying to base it off of rumors that are out there. But we'll have plenty of time to do that. Well, that's why we create the rumors, Steve. Mm-hmm. True. So Tatis, you would think like strong interest. Sandy in coming here. This is the this is the comparison that I made before, where when you're a little kid, you think your parents are the smartest people in the world. They have all the answers. They are Mm -hmm. God in your eyes, living gods. I still think that. Uh, We know you think that, Steve. Um, (laughs) I don't like where this is headed for Alan and Pat. I don't like this one bit. I know, this is not a great start (laughs) for Alan. Choose your words carefully. You you know they're listening, like, what the hell is this little fucker about to say? (laughs) The older you get. (laughs) Bad start. The older you get, the more you realize our parents don't have all the answers. Uh, They will say things that you don't question as a kid. And then you get older and you're like, well, wait a second. Uh, Maybe you're wrong about this. Uh, Maybe I have a different viewpoint. I don't just adopt your viewpoints. Maybe I have a viewpoint of my own that's different from yours. When you're a young sports fan... You think, well, obviously the people that are in the front office of my favorite sports team, they're way smarter than me. Like they, they have all the answers. They are the professionals. They're at the top of their profession. That's why they're in the front office of uh, one of the major sports teams. Well, um, then years go by where you don't make the playoffs or years go by where you do things like, I don't know, trade Mookie bets uh, for Alex Verdugo. <laughs> Just a wild example. Um, yeah, I'm just like a uh, trade. Uh, yeah, hypothetical. Yeah, all hypothetical here. So then you kind of get to the point where you're like, you know, I I had this trust in my organization where it's like, yeah, this this is filled up of men and women who are way smarter than me and know way better than me. You grow up, you get a little older, and you're like, well, wait a second. Um, you guys do a lot of dumb shit that I think I would have made a smarter decision if given the opportunity. That's why these discussions, Steve, they, they matter because you can't sit here and say that people, we, we know for a fact when we were doing the, uh, the first ever section 10 merch photo shoot that people from the Red Sox, the inside the office were like, Hey man, the whole office. (laughs) Listen, <laughs> they're all listening. Yeah, so that was right scary. in those cool like, ideas down. So, so I'm not. That was scary. I'm, I'm not saying that the people that work there are dumb. They're very smart people. They're they're the, they're at the top of the they food are. chain in their profession. A lot of smart people working in there. All I'm saying, Steve, is yeah. that maybe the Fernando Tatis rumor doesn't exist right now, but if we create the dialogue, maybe someone hears it and is like. You know what? That's a pretty good fucking idea. like. Why don't we let's let's get the wheels rolling on this and see if we can get somewhere with it? Like that, we're at the point now 
where that's not far fetched. That's not crazy. Like we we can start that. We can get the the wheels turning and some brains over there. What my sickness is is Mike Francesa and Mad Dog Russo famously kind of forced the Mets to sign Mike Piazza. Like they were the ones who pushed <laughs> that on radio. They obviously had the biggest show in the world and. Piazza was coming up with the Dodgers, and they were like, the Mets, if they sign this fucking guy, he's going to bring us to the World Series. And all of that was correct. They signed Mike Piazza, he brought them to the World Series. Uh, he almost killed Roger Clemens after Roger Clemens almost killed him. A whole lot happened. Mm -hmm. And with this platform, with everything Jared just said, I'm just like, I need to get Fernando Tatis Jr. to Boston. Like, it just needs that. <laughs> it just has to happen now. It's, and like, I, mean, I didn't even say his name when we were talking about guys we would trade. You could make an argument Durant's had a better season than Tatis, especially because Tatis has been hurt. If, yeah. If that's the For that reason, point, yes. Very easy, yes. Slow me. start, With injury, all that, yes. Sure, yeah. But then with the contract and all that, they don't get to pay that guy for five years. Some people have credited this podcast with getting David Price to Boston. That's um, a fact. Oh, that that was a yeah. big fact. You you played a huge role the uh, in that. I wouldn't credit any of it. That was you. That no, was not no, us. no. We, it was the team. We did it. We did it. Yeah, that was we us. Did it. That was <laughs> we did it. We did it. Yeah, we did it. David Price to Boston. Um, I I love David Price. I always used to say that. We go. We got Caleb Ward off the team. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe that was a bad idea. We got Pablo Sandoval released. Blame <laughs> Dave Bush. Yeah, just saying. I mean, legitimately, I think we got Pablo Sandoval. The, no, we did. We we got Pablo Sandoval released from the Boston Red Sox. Once again, that was you. That, well, that was not. That was not us. We. But it's us. Yeah, it was us. Yeah, that it was, was us as well. We did that. So that's why I'm saying. You know, like I get what you're saying. I don't want to. Come up with these uh, fugazi trade fugazi, rumors. Fugazi, it's, it's a woozy, it's a wazzy. But that's why yeah. it's phrased as like something realistic. And I think the Tatis thing depends on what the Padres do this this postseason. Sure, uh, I think some things still have to shake out. But who's to say that we can't get the ball rolling over there? I don't know. And I, I, I don't think there's anything they could do that's going to trump their owner dying. Like it's clear that's where all the money is spending. Out of nowhere, the Padres start spending money. I thought you were going to say out of nowhere he died. I was like, definitely it wasn't. No, I think that's why they start <laughs> spending money. And I think with him dying, they're like, all right, maybe let's not spend as much money. Let's get Juan Soto the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, could be a correlation. I think Jerry, when you're alluding to, you know, the more we've been around, uh, I'm not going to bring my parents into this and calling them stupid. Um, I didn't call my parents stupid for the record. They didn't. You True. landed the plane. Yeah, thank yeah, you. you. Yes, it, it was going there, and then it didn't end up going mm -hmm. there, which is credit to you. Thank you. Um, and credit to you for getting David Price here. Yeah, well. we did that. But, yeah, we did that as a team. The more... We did it! And it we did it! <laughs> we, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. 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 We did no. It. no. We did it. Come on. The only fucking winners of this I got a myself. We did it. Oh, yeah, that was rough. God. I do agree on that take. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a good take. No, we're not. This isn't not tattooed. Anyway, what was gonna say, say, I, say, I, I didn't even say his name. I was just <laughs> celebrating for a second. The more that we've been around, Tyler, what, Tyler? What? Holy, I have a question. Uh, no. Jason no, Hater. What the no. fuck, man? No, Steve Stern. Tyler, Steve Stern. Tyler, it was a basketball question. All right, yeah, go ahead. You've been making a point. Go ahead, no, Steve. No, no, yeah, go no, ahead. I don't want you to forget. No, I care ahead. about you, Tyler. I don't go want you to forget. I care more about you. Go ahead. Go ahead. The field goal is good. Um, the more we've been around this team, the more we've maybe heard a little bit behind the scenes. Jared, you obviously hear uh, more than I have over the years. The more it would benefit that claim that, wait, who who is making all these decisions? Like, like how how who's discussing who? Like, do, do they actually understand the urgency? All those questions have come up. And I'm now tying that to the McAdam art, uh, article because I wanted to read this quote real quick. Uh, and this is the Breslow comments here. Asked if he believed he would be given a sufficient payroll budget from ownership to accomplish their goals. Breslow, without providing specifics, indicated that would be the case. Quote, those conversations are always ongoing, and I feel like when opportunities to improve our team exist, we can take them to ownership, and I think I'll have the support to do that. So it's like, once again, it's like around and around we go in this circle of, yeah, I mean, like, Technically, when something like that comes up, like I can maybe talk to John Henry and like, 
like who knows man like in in theory like if the right you know situation happens then we can get the right person here that's why you know earlier in the show mentioning of course we're kind of ready to be let down because i think these lines are similar to what we've heard before from Haim from others that until you get full approval from ownership and until you get full backing and you feel that that urgency again then nothing whether it's a hypothetical trade or like a real rumor or a fake rumor or any of that is ever really going to matter I mean, in what, two of the last three off-seasons, they gave Devers a massive contract, which didn't feel like anything because you just paid a guy who was already here. Like, if that had been a and free agent probably contract, should have already paid, yeah. No doubt. I'm not debating that. I should have been paid five years earlier, no doubt. And they signed Story, which obviously hasn't worked out on the field, but it was a large deal to give out in free agency, and that was under Heim. It was the only one he was allowed to give out. So I think they look at it as like, the last two haven't worked out great for us, which is a stupid way of thinking. No, the story one is probably the most scary. If you're in our position and you want them to spend, the Trevor Story thing is a bad bullet. And it's one that I think they would immediately point to and say, this clearly has not worked out like you promised me it would, because that's how they would phrase it. It would be like, you came to me and said, this is the guy you needed. I went out, I paid for him, and now he's just kind of the leader and a good defensive player for you. And he hasn't played a full season yet. And now we're going to be entering what season three, four, four, I've lost four. Yeah. Even the the second biggest contract that I'm handed out 90 million to Yoshida is nothing small, especially with the way they want to act today. The Yoshida one doesn't help either. These these all obviously don't benefit. But like, you got to go back. Yoshida one's weird because he plays well and they're like, this fucking guy won't knock it off. (laughs) Enjoy your platoon. Um, the Yoshida another, one sucks. We've talked about that. But yeah, that that's for multiple reasons that uh, it's not great, but it should be better. So, even beyond that, like with the Chris Martin and Kenley Jansen stuff, it's like I, I wonder how much damage you've done to, you know, trying to convince people and players to come here when those guys were signed with the belief they were going to be competing, you know, for championships. You know, the first year may have been somewhat of a, hey, we're going to be the fringe wildcard team. Kenley has come out and told you what he was promised and what he believed. And guess what? You got two bridge years and you got told to go screw. Now, I'll tell you, it sounds like Chris Martin would do anything to come back here for another year at this point. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds pretty desperate to get re-signed. Uh, and I'm not against it. I'd totally be into having that conversation. But I don't know. Like, you know, when you tell players, I think that proves to not only Heim, like Heim didn't know what was going to happen to him. He didn't know what lines John Henry was going to draw. So it's like, you don't know where, you know, the tone will change for John Henry, depending on the day. Like they may go in here and it's like, yeah, you know, maybe another year we're going to try to spend or this year was that it's like clearly even between the CBO and the owner, things haven't been on the same page from time well, to time. We we hypothesize about them telling Alex Cora that they're going to spend. I think we can just jump to the conclusion that they told him. Like, I, I think we can just, you know, assume that there were promises made. And the further you go I- into this, you know, current version of the organization and the ownership's mindset the more you can think these promises don't matter at all and that they don't really amount to anything. And that then leaves us back at square one of like, great, like you can say what you want to say about what you're going to do in these off seasons. But until you actually, you know, push the right buttons, who cares about the freaking promises? If you want to talk about uh, rumors that do exist and this will tie back into Tyler's Celtics, <laughs> the absolute worst thing that can happen to the city of Boston is FSG buying the Celtics because not only will it completely like they're not going to spend any money on free agents if they buy the fucking oh. Celtics this off season, and it will also immediately kill the Celtics. Like I can't have the double negative, both yeah. teams ruined. It can't happen. The more I hear about that, the more it like sound and not even behind the scenes, just the more reports that are out there, right? The more it's like shit. Is this actually going to happen? No, we're rooting for the Saudis. Hey. Anyone but Henry. Tyler, what was the Celtics thing you had? I'm sure this is big. Yeah, uh, Jason Tatum's shooting mechanics, right? I, I read a story that he'd been working to kind of remove a hitch. Um, and I saw some video today. I don't know enough about basketball to say the hitch was removed. I don't know if you saw the same thing. I don't know if you could tell me there was an actual difference or not. Wait, did you say you don't know if I don't know enough? No, <laughs> I said I don't know enough. Right. I said I don't hey, know hey, enough. Hey, Coley, you right. know anything about this team, you fucking right. idiot? It's right. like you added that at the end. No, 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 no. I was asking for help. Okay. I bet you can't see the difference either. 
Help. Never a doubt. Penrod and Guerrero. Sprout. 500? Reroute. Story on both sides. Raffaella and Grissom. Four straight. Yes, it's fate. Series of Tykus by Tyler Melga. <laughs> and it's not fate. Yeah, that was hope. At the time, though, I, I like that. That was a good bar. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can I mention something real quick here? Yeah, please. Uh, while we're on the coups, mm -hmm. just as we've done all season, a major shout out to Garrett. Oh, I forgot to respond to Garrett. Garrett, I'm sorry. I know you're listening right now. I saw the long message. He sent the long message to you guys? All of us. I, to all of us, yeah. Oh, all of where? Us DMs. On Twitter? Twitter. On Twitter. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 yeah. I, I am the least available that I've ever been in my life. The amount of people that DM me saying like, hey, you know, sent this to Jared too. I'm like, you could fucking luck with that. Yeah. There's no chance. I, He's replying. I am the least reachable that I've ever been um, with anybody, really. Steve? But to Garrett, he tracked the nominated tycoons throughout the How course many of the season. Oh. Eight. Oh. Which, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's right Jake in the middle of what we all said. <laughs> you definitely said lower. You I said like no, five no, or no, six. No, no, you no. guys said ten or twelve, and it's eight. No, 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 no. Your fucking mind. There's fucking ten in there. <laughs> wow. Jesus. <laughs> He's so angry. You just scared me, dude. This is not what haikus are supposed to provoke. <laughs> Supposed to be about peace and tranquility and the You scene. in defining what a haiku is, Coley. Who made you the mayor of the fucking haikus? I just read the definition that you've clearly never looked up. This is my fucking town. I will talk how the haikus go. I will set the rules. You are not fucking deciding them. It's the one well, thing I said... have control over. <laughs> He's just letting like it out. Control. I know. Ah! I a little bit of... <laughs> What Garrett said here, jeez. <laughs> I've got the notes page I've got, so you can see them all, and I'm sure I've missed Jared nominate one along the way with how many hours of the pod there are throughout the season, but my count has 10 if you add the two from last pod. Did you add two from... Did you add those? I don't think you did. No. No, you, so uh, it's at eight. So it's at eight if we didn't have the two right, from the last yeah, pod. So it's at, I, it's yeah, at yeah. eight, Tyler. Yeah. I didn't read the message all the way through. Yeah. yeah Tyler's just screaming at everybody. This guy, guy just can't even person read. is out wanting so to kill right. us, and he's, and he's wrong. He's fully wrong. No, you weren't right. I, 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 I said I was right. <laughs> I was right that it was in the... Like, no, 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 hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on, no, hold, no, no. hold on. I was right that it was in between what we all said. I said it was either five or six, and then you guys said it was 10 or 12. And it's eight. I it's you a, said eight. I thought we, nah, I thought Jake and nah, I said nah, like nah. seven or eight. No, no because that's eight such an dot. inconsequential gap. If I said six and you were like, I think it's eight, I wouldn't be like, no, it's more like six. Like <laughs> it's in the, the that's you, how all of our arguments go. Yeah. Yeah. That's literally how they all no, go. No, 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 Tyler did. I'm if I sure said Jake's six, said eight on the if I said I, I six said and eight. you guys said eight, then I wouldn't have been like arguing that because they're basically the same number. Garrett, let us know. Coley, I, I bet Coley, Garrett knows the answer. Coley, you would because it was to knock Tyler down, even if it's just by one or two. No, no, yeah. no, 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 yeah. no. I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> I wouldn't have done that. Jake. <laughs> Yeah, I think we were all saying like 10 or 12 and you had it at 8. <laughs> well, Jake, Jake, come on, man. You could have just done a victory lap. You had 8. You had it, Jake. I was going to give you credit, Jake. I was at like 12, Jake, think, Jake won't even take his own W's. Nah. He's that much well, of a team player. Nah. He won't even take Jake, his own W's. Jake just obviously has a fucking excellent memory is what he has. <laughs> I know Jake said 8. He didn't. I'm hearing Jake said 8. Garrett's going to let us know. All right, Garrett. Uh, not you. You don't know how to fucking read. Yeah, that's true. I never knew how to read. 
That's true. We That's, my favorite yeah. arguments are when Tyler growls. He'll he'll get so angry <laughs> when he's like, ah. <laughs> it is funny, Tyler, to get that upset and you're just fully wrong about it. Like, yeah, that's get, most yeah. things, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> to get that upset and not be right, stop. Yeah, like, the more tough. passionate this I get, the more wrong time. I am. <laughs> <laughs> my to all of it, it's just wrong. Man. But yeah, shout out Garrett, uh, who sent all those over. Shout out to Garrett. He is um, the Section 10 encyclopedia, basically. Love you, Garrett. Um, Garrett loves Game Time. I know that. Mm-hmm. He says it all the time. Yeah, he's, he's always saying that. Game Time has a new game feature time called... Game Time, Garrett. Game Time, Garrett. Uh, game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste your time searching through thousands of tickets. Me and Steve use the Game Time app because we're going to the game. Actually, Jake, you're coming too, right? Mm-hmm. On Friday? On Sunday. Yeah, I should be at either one, yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's buying the tickets right now. Wait. It sounds like Jake's going to be there Friday. Wait. <laughs> Steve, did you get Sunday or Friday? I got Sunday. Isn't that what I told you, Jake? Sounds like Jake's going Friday. <laughs> I guess I'm going both. Yeah, so getting, getting credentials for the last Sox game. No, getting uh, tickets yeah. on the game timeout. <clears throat> I, hey, I, yeah, I think this is the exact text. Hey, Jake, what's up, man? I think you've had a great season this year and you're an awesome friend. I'm getting tickets with me and Jared for the Sunday game on game time. Do you want to join us? That's what I said. Yeah, no, I misread it. I thought you said Friday and Sunday. Well, the great thing, the great thing about the game time app is that they're going to have tickets for Friday too. So that's perfect. That's perfect. This works out great. This is awesome. <laughs> this works out perfect because now you can use the Game Time app more than one time. Um, game Time picks the curation makes it easier to save even more on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Uh, all in pricing, you toggle that feature. It shows you the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout. Get a panoramic view in your seat. Uh, from your seat in the app before you buy your tickets, the lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Uh, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry today. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use the promo code section 10 for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, use the promo code section 10 S E C T I O N one zero for $20 off. Download the game time app today. Tyler, what time is it? Game time. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it is. You're right. <laughs> Tyler, you look furious during that. Uh, what What was wrong? Furious? I actually feel yeah. better now that I've let out some of that rage. No, you went like this, which I know you just do now, but you went mm. like this when Steve was oh, saying yeah. text to Jake about going to the game. What, what was that reaction? Coley, thank you for noticing, because not everyone mm-hmm. always notices when I... The emotion kind of pours through me at times. You do and... stuff like that all the time. What, what happened? Yeah. Steve, this is about you, so I choose my words very carefully. Oh, the way you spoke to Jake, <laughs> I've never been spoken to you by, or like you've never spoken to me like that before. Like, oh. hey, Jake, you're my friend, and like all these nice words, I never get any kind of like language like that. So, like, you're no Jake. I don't know. Well, that, I mean, if Jake's I can defend Steve for one second, why would Steve ask you to come to the game knowing that you the answer is no? You would not. Sometimes come. you just want no. to be asked. Sometimes no, you just want but like, you, an extended but you've hand. never gone. Yeah, you can never go. I've you been. would never go. I've been to Fenway Park with you guys once. It was the best day ever. Many would say it was a great day. But mm. what time are the Patriots playing on it. Sunday? Are they playing on Sunday? Uh, yes. Four Forty Niners. Oh, so the we're going to be at game. Fenway for the Pats game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, that's ESPN. That's not. <laughs> Wait, what was that? What's the NFL song? It's like, what you just said. Nope, no, that's still it. That's still ESPN. That's not it. Yep. That's not. Why are you just doing all the sports? You just shit? started earlier in the song. You're just doing the soup. NFL Sunday. 
Are you going for like ESPN's football music? Is that what you want? I don't fucking know, dude. I'm going dun, for dun, 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 dun. like there's that. They have that for like the highlights. That's the dun, highlight. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. yeah, that's the high- that's a great highlight song, by the way. One of the best. I don't know. I don't know anymore. What are you going for? I you don't going know. for Monday Night Football? I think that's what you're going for. He doesn't know. He's never seen a football. <laughs> What's the dun 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 Oh. Dude, dude, dude. Yeah. Dun 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 you're gonna sing it so accurately that <laughs> yeah. What does it sound like, Tyler? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's like that's like like a bad guy in a Disney movie. That's what it sounds like when they show the that's bad guy for the first time. <laughs> dun dun dun. <laughs> I don't know. That's definitely not any type of football theme uh, at all. Here on Monday Night Football, we got the Phantom of the Opera <laughs> dun. coming in. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Four game winning streak. New head coach this year. <laughs> yeah. Quack. Quack. Jim the, is it Jim the Penguin? No. It is? It's not. I believe so. Yeah. Oh. Tyler. Shout out to all the people that agreed, uh, you know, with my whole penguin looking like it would taste good. And some people have ate penguin. Uh, also, the people who said they ate horse. Intriguing as well. Who the fuck said that, Steve? Uh, I, I wanted this to be when you least expect it. I, I think Tyler's had an incredible season. I, I think he's become a good friend of mine. I don't know if I would have said that at the start of the year. I'm like, how is this season going to go? It's gone way better than I ever thought. I've become very close to Tyler. I like my chats with Tyler. And I know how hard he works and how little he sleeps. And I appreciate that. Thank you, Steve. I love you. That meant a lot. It is interesting timing considering I just had an outburst over <laughs> how you spoke to Jake. But I just wanted it to be unexpected. I'm going to believe you. And I want to say all those words are the same. And I can't wait to do more podcasting and Red Sox talk with you moving forward. Why are you going to toss somebody? This is a special moment. I didn't uh, that was very insincere word salad from Tyler Eggert, Jared. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. I didn't toss anybody. Okay. How many times? How many times have uh, you guys texted on the side? Thousands. Uh, not too often. <laughs> <laughs> anytime, hey, anytime I ask Tyler for something, he has it in three seconds. No. I probably text Tyler like once every couple weeks, every like three weeks for like either a clip or something. He has it for me immediately. Tyler, I'm a good Tyler, soldier. Tyler gives you clips. If there's something I missed from, like, the game, like, I just know that he can just, like, I, I don't know, he's got an encyclopedia of, like, everything that's ever happened with the Red Sox. Mm. Like, some, like a video, like, bank or something. I don't know what the hell you do. But I knew that if I asked Tyler for something, <laughs> then he sends it over immediately. He's the, probably the quickest replier to texts that I've ever seen. Mm-mm. Well, it's because it's, it's probably because you don't have a life. But Mm-mm. all right. He's, not, we that, doing he's great. not that. He's not A lot of positive stuff, and then we ended, <laughs> we ended right in the dirt, in the ditch. Well, yeah, it's because uh, it's because you fucking suck. That's why. Yeah, that's why. That's why. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, maybe not much of a, like a, a. Do you have a big social life, Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> I have multiple. I have my girlfriend, you, and I have a friend. Yes. You get uh, one of those things called friends. You got those. Yeah. 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 You got friends. I, I do got you go out? That yeah. like me. Yeah, actually, serious question. Do you go out at all during the season? During the season, very rarely. It's actually yeah, Mickey Minaj people. is coming to town. Yes. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. I gotta prioritize. I give Martha any free time I have. Martha during the season, and Bubba. But... That's it. That's Puff. All. Puff. Just the Bubba stuff. That's starting to get to me too. Respect the boy's name. <laughs> is that? Yeah. I know. <laughs> Bubba. <laughs> Martha and Bubsy. <laughs> Bubsy. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Momo and Bibby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those are all I got time for. 
<laughs> no, I, I gotta say, I gotta say, Tyler. Now that we're just on like the you know Tyler review of the season, but you being a loser. Yeah. <laughs> no, I no. I'll, I said I'll you have no good fucking stuff. friends. <laughs> Who's no? I I don't I don't even say it as a negative. I don't know how you have time to do anything else when I see a tweet from you every I don't know eight minutes. Like I. I, I'm a little I'm partially a little concerned for it. Like, I want to make sure you have a good off season that you take some breathers, right? Take a little time off for yourself. I'm thinking of you, Tyler. Thank you. I'm a little bit of a workaholic at times, but it's fun. I'm but happy that can, something that can I kill like. you. That can kill you. That mm. can kill I'm OK dying young, though, as long as it's like a good impact. It's not I actually think I'm you. better timing out like early than you fell from from a, lo- a high <laughs> floor. <laughs> I'm terrified of heights. Big impact. Tyler, you are the most likely to die early of all of us, but I'm saying this that is it's like the a meanest compliment. thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Tyler, you go from no friends to you're going to die Tyler. early. To, <laughs> Tyler, to your just, life is kind of sad. You tweet all the time. You do nothing else. Speak up, Steve. What else do you have to say? Tell you just call my you mom fat, young. Steve. Say it. Call my mom. No, fat. I don't talk about moms. I'm like you. I don't talk about moms. I don't oh, great! Throw that in my face too. <laughs> <laughs> the intent was good here. The yeah. intent was good. Yeah, there I, don't we know. I don't know that it's. You just said there. you're gonna die young. You just said Cody's you're gonna die. Balding. Wow, Steve. <laughs> I've, never yeah. said that. I've never said that. I I can't bring that up. Yeah, I. You aren't. By the way, you aren't. You aren't. No, he is. I think there is a. Uh, <laughs> It started off super positive. I don't know why it took a left. No, I'm saying, how do I, how do I explain this without being an insult? Like, of all of us, Tyler, had, <laughs> could you believe what happened to Tyler? Like, I, don't, I would I don't believe know, anything I don't that happens without, to Tyler. Without, but, well, keep it positive. It's just like, no, no, it's just you like, got, come, you on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He sucks um, and he's of, fat. Of all of us. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems like you don't have friends. That's all. If you heard something crazy happen to one of us, who's it going to be? You've never left that chair in your life. You're stuck in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, I think nope. you've had a great season. I, I think your your passion for what yeah, you do anyway, is so unmatched. Yeah, so land the plane. You're the best, Tyler. <laughs> You're the uh, best. Yeah. I did not intend for it to go down a bad for road. For somebody yeah. who can barely stand up and breathe simultaneously, <laughs> you're one of the best. <laughs> I did not bring any one of the weights that you look better than you have all season mm-hmm. one. They Thank did you. look terrible at the beginning of the year. Good point, Steve. Good mm-hmm. point. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're fat now, but back then you were way fatter. Oh, man. <laughs> I did not mention any weight stuff. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't think of that. You know, it's like I said, it started off super positive. I just don't know that we kept it there. <laughs> it's hard to speak positive about me though i, I think no, that's not no true. i'm, I'm just being super honest about what tyler's day today is and i want to make sure he has enough time to live a life yeah. outside of the red sox stuff i say i'll I, be good i compliment you all the time t-dog all of you guys do you speak very no, that's not true no i, we do, I do it the most <laughs> would you agree you do speak very highly of me probably more than anybody just because and i'll add this you circle in with my job a lot as well so like you're always very positive and speaking very highly of me mm-hmm. um so yeah, yeah i'm very lucky to have you guys i know but i think um i think you uh you're the breakout breakout star of the year tyler Milliken. you mean that mm-hmm. i mean Thanks. there's only one person whose name got chanted at section 10 night back incredible vlog. actually no they chanted they chanted my name too but they oh, chanted okay. yours first they chanted yours first <laughs> they chipped but they only chanted yours because he was in the dunk tank correct they to see correct him that chant does not happen without you tyler i'm happy people can stand me i'm happy i'm tolerable <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not happy good with I've set my baseline of tolerable mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I do appreciate i have a very hard time accepting positive reinforcement makes me uncomfortable i gave you a big hug multiple times i know and how uncomfortable do i feel when you're hugging me like that mm. like you it's like um i would imagine it would be like having like a first kiss with someone that's never had a first kiss before is like hugging yes, Tyler Milliken. It's like he doesn't. It's know also what... kissing someone you're probably not like extremely sexually attracted to, so they're like uncomfortable and like sweating. Hey, are, and, like, Steve already tore into you. You don't have to do it to yourself. Yeah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you, do, you do it all the time. Like I'm so well, yeah, but I but I'm like I don't know, man. I just suck. Like no, I don't... 
the the highest compliment I can pay Tyler, and I mean this is a legitimate compliment, is there are people who, if you try and joke on them, they get very angry and very upset, and it makes the joke funnier because they do that. Tyler will go with the joke no matter how much it's at his expense and like play with it, which is such a rare quality, and it's something I appreciate out of people that you just don't get out of everyone. Unless Thank it was you. like three minutes ago, but all right. <laughs> But I don't know. He he let us say me specifically a lot of mean things, and he just got laughing. Was, you were spitting, Coley. <laughs> you were going crazy. <laughs> Jake, Jake, you know what? You, Jake hasn't said anything yet. Would you like to just cook Man, me real quick? It. No, okay. <laughs> I'm all set. I feel like we have it covered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got you, bro. <laughs> I'm all set. <laughs> Pass the rock. <laughs> Clean 40 tonight. Mm. Never going to happen. What are we uh, at? But what is going to happen is people are going to listen to this. They're going to download the Underdog Fantasy mm -hmm. app. Tyler's going to put his fucking hand down. <laughs> They're going to put enter <laughs> promo code Jared. How's that spelled, Jared? Uh, J-A-R-E-D. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, and you're going to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash. Just like that, Just like Tyler. That. We probably should discuss this after the pod, but I'm going to bring it up here. <laughs> With the way we're going to do interviews, are we going to do the Clark's Ketchup panel again? Since, you know, Section 10 is back now, are we going to go through and do all those interviews over the offseason? I don't know, dude. Why? It just popped into my <laughs> head. I think we will be doing two a week in the offseason. That was my idea. Yeah, thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for uh, being like we guy we we us guys got to do two episodes a week. We can't just be yeah. sitting around doing one. Well, you kept texting me like, dude, just just one man, yeah. one. Come on, one show mm -hmm. a week. We need a little bit of a rest. Yeah. I'm like, dude, this is the time to go. This is not the time to rest. Right. That's what I said. I was like, I need a breather. You know, mm -hmm. I want to do less. And you were and then like, I said, like I always say, I was like, stop being a, a pussy, it, man. Yeah. That's yeah. what I said. Yeah. Hashtag, yeah. if you're listening to this, make sure you tweet hashtag thank you, Steve. The hashtag yes. thank you, thank Steve. You, thank you. You hashtag don't have to, but you Steve. should, but you don't have to, but like it would be great. <laughs> hashtag, yeah. Thank you, you Steve. <laughs> you should, but don't, no, but you should. <laughs> you should. Oh, please. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hashtag thank you, Steve. You don't have to thank do it. You, Steve. But like definitely should, but yeah, you should do it. You don't have to. <laughs> There's no obligation. If you do it, it'll be appreciated. This is like when uh when Steve left section ten the first time and just started like the hashtag the thank you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Coming next Tuesday. See? I was gonna say, is this like foreshadowing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're teasing my big announcement coming up mm -hmm. here, man. Come on. Yeah. Um yeah, so we'll be doing Two week. I've got ideas. I've got ideas for that second episode. I think we can make it fun. But I think we don't do two. Like, are we doing two a week in October, or we're 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 waiting until November? Yeah, no, November. November. Yeah, November. one a week in October. It's not be crazy here. Yeah, one a week in October, then November we go back to two. Three streams the first week of October. How about that? Yeah, yeah, that's gonna suck, but. Subscribe on uh, our YouTube channel. <laughs> it's gonna suck for us, not for the viewer. Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're gonna make sure that sucks. Like that's not gonna be. <laughs> Check out our streams. They're gonna suck. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna blow. Tune in. It's gonna be on the yeah. UDM will be YouTube. Yeah. Ch subscribe to the YouTube channel. Watch our shitty streams. They're gonna be awful. Uh, and then back Tyler to two Papaginos. episodes. Oh, uh, yeah, three, three straight days that. of Papa Gino's. Oh, we're doing all three. Okay. What do you mean? What do you mean? No, I just wanted to make sure we're doing Tyler. What do you mean, Tyler? I'm choosing what I say very carefully here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. But near Jared's house, there is one of my favorite restaurants. Actually, the favorite. I had, I had 99 for dinner tonight. This is like all I order now, and I think it's credit to Tyler. I think we should order the 99 one night during the stream. I think that's great. I'm not opposed to that. On me. I'll cater the 99. 
Ooh. Please. No, Let thanks. me buy you something. No. Are you, you, know what Jared's, you know what Jared's doing right now? You know that episode of Sopranos where, like, I think it's, like, Meadow's boyfriend tries, like, pays for dinner and Tony wants to, oh like, kill Oh, my God. Him. He's like, right. listen, if you ever do that again, he basically, like, if you ever do that again, like, I'm going to kill you. Like, mm-hmm. don't, don't pay, don't pay for dinner. I'm paying for dinner. That's what, that's what Jared's doing right now. I'm you're, paying for dinner. Your guests in my home. Your guests in my home. Okay. You're right. I'm sorry. All right. Yes, Tyler. Tyler. Who else is going to be at the stream now that I know that we're doing this? I'm actually kind of excited about it. Baseball is dead. Everybody? Everybody. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Oh, wow. I mean, you've met all of them. 100%. I just, I didn't know any of this was going on. This is big news to me. I mean, that's just a lack of paying attention, feels like. It's too busy raising his hand thinking about what to say next. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be all the Section 10 guys. <laughs> it's going to be all the Section 10 guys. <laughs> and then all the baseball is dead guys. Crossover event of the millennium. Mm-hmm. And that's including, including Joey? Dallas and Joey. Yes. <laughs> it's yeah. good Jake too. Has Jeremy put out a thing for this episode yet a couple things I'm kind of scared to look Jeremy's coming too this is the best day of my life oh Jeremy you didn't have to do it. you didn't have to tweet out hashtag thank you Steve but I appreciate that you did mm-hmm. again it, you didn't no obligation you didn't have to yeah. this was a very nice tweet of it about you, Steve. Thank you. Oh, I didn't even notice that I tweeted out that nice tweet about you. <laughs> <laughs> I was hacked. No, he, he he put that in his. He scheduled it so many months ago. He was he just knew. Steve tweeted about Tyler. Oh yeah, no. shit! I mean, Did what I? is he not? I think Tyler Milliken has done an incredible job covering the Red Sox this year. Nobody puts more time into this than him. I hope he can have a great vacation at some point this off season. Not one negative thing was said about Tyler here. That's true. Mm-hmm. I'm going <laughs> to respond right now to you, Steve. Thank gotta, you. Got to tip your cap to the guy. You're forgiven for calling <laughs> my mom fat. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? I will write that. I will write that. Ah, Cole, you didn't have to tweet hashtag thank you, Steve, but I do appreciate it. Listen. <laughs> you gotta tip your cap. Do, yeah. you gotta tip your cap to that guy. Two, there's two guys you get to tip your cap to. They're both from Brockton. The guy that shit his pants and Tyler Milliken. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always wanted to shit my pants, and you know, <laughs> on that morning, I just, I just knew I had something in me. <laughs> it just something felt right. Just tip your cap to him. It's all you can do. You know. All right, um, Steve. Final thoughts. What? <laughs> uh, final thoughts. Final, do you have final one? thought? I I definitely got some thoughts. All right, yeah. What do you got? What? Final thoughts. Oh, Steve, you know what's going on? Steve wants to go another hour. So I know, can't like, I, and no, this is a rare scenario where I still got like a ton of stuff in my notes. Like, and we what? Haven't done this it's stuff. fucking 1 a.m. <laughs> no, I know. This is actually a rare scenario where I'm like ready to go till three. Um, no, I want to talk about the jerseys that I thought the, the city connects and all that and, and getting rid of the blues. Uh, I, I had a couple things here. Nothing super pressing, but we have don't we have a voicemail to play or, or a, a submission? I think actually, since it is, we, hold on, hold on, since it is season catch up, it should wait till we have that. We're all going to do that, so I don't know why we would play theirs today. That's a great point, oh, Coley. Right. Wow. Hold on, yeah, good point, kid. Good point, kid. It's a great point, Coley. Good point. Yeah, it's a Are great we gonna, point. We, we talk about the jerseys or no? Uh, yeah, no. 
<laughs> oh, we did on the on tied in the A's, so that's why I didn't even think about. Well, it. also we don't know what the new jerseys look like. Yeah, I think true. Steve does. Well, I mean, he hasn't oh, yeah, seen yeah, them. Think, we just yeah. know that they they're green monster green. That's it. I, I I'm hearing the green monster green. I, they kind of look a little like the the guzos, the guzos, the guzzo <laughs> jersey. <laughs> Shout out the guzz. <laughs> Shout out to big, it's a big guzz. I don't think I've even posted that one yet. I got to post that one. But yeah, guzzo. apparently it's going to be green, monster green. Uh, very sad to see the navy blue go. They won the World like, Series in eighteen is, with those on. This is a really good jersey. Yeah, you I like guys that like jersey. the navy blue. Yeah, I do. Get rid of the grays. Oh, yeah. Out on the grays. I hate that take so much. I'm I also, sorry. Well, what I might hate the most about any of the jersey requirements is that you can have a restriction on the ones you can. Why? Like, why is that a rule? Restriction that you can on only what? wear so many. You have a restriction of how many you can keep in the rotation. I think that's what an MLB thing, by the way. Like, why? Why can't I just have all these options? It's I, four I'm, plus I'm the running, technical city connect. I'm running through the other leagues. They all do that. They all have that. But I, I guess then the, that applies to all of them. Like, I, I don't in terms of like what makes a ton of money it's jersey sales like just have a bunch sure. of different jerseys like who cares right I, i've never really understood that i love the navy blues love the reds i think at some point they only did those on fridays which i kind of like that wrinkle too now that, i don't really love when the reds are just kind of randomly like oh, i guess we're doing red tonight I'm not a huge fan of that um i've never really loved the city connect uniforms i love what they represent but they always make me feel like i'm seeing the aramark people all over the place uh at I like yeah, a lot of people do. A lot of people do like them. They're they're very popular. But yeah, excited to see what they do with these. Apparently, it's going to be green monster green, and then we'll just you know see what the uh, design is. But pretty pumped for that. I think I'd like the blues more if they reversed the hat when they wore them. If they went the red hat with navy B, navy brim, I think that would make it look better. I think it's too drab when it's navy on navy like that. The navies mm. to me are my least favorite outside of when they had the road grays with navy as opposed to mm. road grays with yeah. red. That era was You awful. have a Brenly jersey? That is fire. <laughs> Mike Brenly gave me his jersey. Yeah. <laughs> when? Uh, a couple seasons ago. He was like, I, I got a jersey if you want it. Cause I, I think we had like Joey and I were talking about it, and he was like, I'll I'll give you I'll give you guys a jersey. Well, we had him on the pot. So do we. The fuck? Wow. Yeah, I think jerseys. I think we were talking about like jerseys or something like that. And he was just like, oh, yeah, if you guys want one, I'll just I'll give you one at the park. I was like, yeah, for sure. You have a Mike Brenly jersey. Yep, Mike Brenly Navy. Rare. Now, yeah, now it's now it's even more. It was already rare. rare. It was already very rare. <laughs> I mean, I got a question why he gave you the Navy one. I, he must like known. it's his least favorite. Now it was at the end of the uh, 22 season. I want a Mike Brenly Green Monster Green jersey. OK. I'm sure Mike Brenly would get the 10 some jerseys. <laughs> yeah, the fuck? That's crazy. That could happen on Sunday, honestly. If you want a Mike Brenly, I think you can get one on Sunday. <laughs> I do want a Mike Brenly. All right, we're going to we're going to get you a Brenly jersey on Sunday. That's a Stevie P guarantee. What the wow. fuck? How tight are you with him? See, this is why. That's my guy. Brenly's my guy. He's been my guy for a little bit. Fuck yeah. I mean, I introduced you to him. No, I know. I can have a guy that was introduced. I understand to me by that. I'm just but saying, like, where's my yeah. Mike Brenly jersey? That is fair. Yeah, yeah. That that is a little tough. Where you introduced us and I have a jersey and you don't. That's that's crazy yeah. town. But you're gonna have one on Sunday, and then we'll both have a Mike Brenly jersey. What color do you think it's gonna be? I don't know. Do you have a request? No. I don't. You gonna wear it on Sunday if you get one? Like wear it for the show? What size is he? Uh, forty-two. Forty-two. Is this like a forty-two? Feels very small. It's tight on me. I I tried <clears throat> to put the buttons on. Well, twenty twenty-two. I was fat. Yeah, that's but, a uh, large men's. Forty-two yeah, is a men's. Large. Yeah, that would fit perfect. All right. Get you a friendly. All right, yeah, that's what I want. Cool. Um, Tyler, final thoughts? Uh, congratulations to Christian Campbell, uh, Baseball America's Minor League Player of the Year. I think we all knew it was going to come down to that, but uh, it's nice for him to officially get the recognition there. 
And also congrats to Roman Anthony, who's on the face of baseball prospectuses, you know, big prospect book that goes out every single year. It's just a picture of his face. So good times for the Red Sox farm system. Uh, Coley, final thoughts? I'm pretty sure the picture has his arms and a bat. Other thing, chest. Fucking spare me, Coley. Uh, whoa, not, whoa. Just a <laughs> big close up of his face. The people aren't buying that magazine. <laughs> I would. Not today, not ever. Uh, yeah, number one prospect in baseball, prospect of the year. I'm completely fine with just handing them the keys and not spending if that's the route they go. But I also know they're not going to do that. They're going to end up trading someone that pisses me off. So that's why I can't. Ever no peace. Jake's takes. I just think if we sign Josh back at this winter, we'll really be cooking in 25. <laughs> <laughs> He's available. That's our game one guy, Josh Beckett. Josh Beckett. 2025. If we sign Josh Beckett, <clears throat> it's basically like we have two Josh Becketts. Yeah, essentially. How much do you think you'd have to give him? To even consider sign playing ba- a full season of baseball again, thirty million. <laughs> Imagine that passing tweet breaking Red Sox sign <laughs> Josh Beckett's a one year thirty million dollar deal. Oh, he's gonna use Tanner Houck's season as motivation for twenty twenty five. Yeah, he's like, no way, I'm gonna let you upstage my two thousand seven season. Yeah. Well, Beckett's a big 10 guy, so he's going to see this and be like, for Jared to think that I can't be better than Tanner Houck now is absurd. Right. So he's going to Yeah, one year, 30 million, and I'll come back. (laughs) (laughs) He signs that deal, I bet. Probably. What do you think he does? Like, what does Josh Beckett in 2024 do? Just holds down his ranch. Golfs, gets drunk, and... And that's it, probably. Yeah. Fires a gun directly into the sky like Yosemite Sam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably it. Steve? Last weather look ahead? Yeah. Of the se- season? Mm-hmm. Okay. Weather look ahead is brought to you by Billy's Gummy Bears. Chew them with your mouth. Chew them with your mouth. Last series of the season at Fenway Park. Friday's game one, 7, 10 p.m. Eastern first pitch. Mostly cloudy, 67 degrees. Oh. Yeah, don't get your hopes up. 4% chance of rain, 6 mile an hour winds. Saturday, game two, 4, 10 Eastern first pitch. Partly cloudy, 65 degrees. 3% chance of rain, 12 mile an hour winds. Sunday's the finale. Jared, Jake, we will be there. Very excited. Mm-hmm. 3.05 p.m. first pitch. Partly cloudy, 67 <laughs> 67, you said? 67. Are you sure you're not a dy- uh, dyslexic idiot? <laughs> it's going to be... Seventy-six degrees. Yeah, it's gonna be seventy-six degrees for the final game of the season at Fenway Park Sunday. Me, Steve, Jake, Tyler will all be there. We'll all be there at Fenway for a seventy-six degree. Season finale. Yep, 76 degrees, might be 67. 3% chance of rain, 8 mile an hour winds. Uh, so it's going to be partly sunny, partly cloudy. Final series of the season at Fenway mm-hmm. Park, but no rain. So that is always delightful. Mm-hmm. And that will do it for the season for your weather look ahead, which is as always brought to you by Billy's Gummy Bears. Chew them with your mouth. And again, hashtag thank you, Steve. For he has said he will continue to do the weather look ahead all off season. Mm hmm. Uh, dead of winter, you you will not find more accurate meteorology anywhere. Yeah, than on the mm-hmm. tent. yeah, you should definitely do the weather look ahead, like for any snowstorms. Just like give us the weather for Fenway, okay. like in the yeah. middle of January. <laughs> be like, I'll do. I can I can do off season storm watch. Yeah, negative six that. degrees. <laughs> Let me. In case you're just at Fenway Park yeah. when this happens. Just in the yeah. area, you're going on a tour or something. Okay. Just one last time. 
when I go to Stop and Shop, I can cross off everything that's on my list. Fuck yeah, fuck yes. Look ahead. We're so spoiled, we don't dare. We're so spoiled, I'm seeing red. Stop and shop, we look ahead. We're so spoiled, we don't dare. We're so spoiled, I'm seeing red. Stop and shop, we look ahead. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. What's better than having a stop and shop, getting it done for all of you? Oh, <laughs> uh, man. For all of you. What's better? Nothing. You tell me. Nothing better. Um, Friday's game, Taj Bradley versus uh, Nick Pavetta. No, I'm just doing the, like the starters. Shane Boz versus Cutter Crawford and uh, Ryan Pepio versus what could be Tanner Houck. Alex Cora said, "No, yeah. it's my segment." <laughs> okay. Hand up, hand up. I'll take a step back. Yeah, uh, Alex Cora said, uh, "It's it's really up to Hauk if he wants to make the start." He said it would be a really cool moment if <laughs> if how could come off the mound and get the standing ovation that he deserves for the season that he's had um <laughs> so we don't know yet if it's going to be how but it sounds like Cora will let him go <laughs> if he wants to go do you have anything you wanted to add to that or are you just going to say what i said no further notes okay <laughs> just making sure <clears throat> Dave, want to say say something real quick? See, yep. If the Red Sox get swept here, mm-hmm. then Jared Carabas has accurately predicted mm. the exact Red Sox record. So that's what's on the line. I don't think they're getting swept. I don't think so either. But if the Rays sweep them, then you nailed the prediction. So they got to get also, swept to, in order for that to be. Yeah. If they win a game, then we were all under the win total. I also believe the next game he plays will be Trevor Story's 162nd as a member of the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> My math is correct. He's played quite well as of late. Above league average bat by quite some. By quite some. By quite some. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting so fresh. It's been quite well lately. Huh? He needs well, he needs two more bat. games, Coley. Are you sure? Oh, wait. I was doing it off. I was doing no. it off baseball reference, and they don't add today's game yet. You're right. You're right. That. You're right. You're right. You're right. They got to figure that You're out right. for next year. Yeah, that's why I don't use it. I, there is an app at the top that's like we are hiring, so they are, they are <laughs> trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. No, um. Right. Yeah, you're right. His next game will be 162 with the Red Sox. You're right, Tyler. Thank you. Uh, just a heads up, since we are going into these next three games, the Red Sox right now are slotted for the 13th pick. Obviously, there's a lottery now, and all that will factor in. They have a 1.2 percent of landing the number one overall pick, partially because the White Sox and A's are unable to land the first overall pick. Um, but. Right now, the team in front of them, the Giants at number 12, they have one less win than you. So depending on how the next three games go, good chance you could move up another spot and have better odds. That'd be a 1.5% so, chance. I saw Stats tweet this. The A's and the White Sox cannot be a top 10 pick. That was, was the first. Three. That was Yes. It, they're ineligible to pick better than 10th due to previous oh, lotteries. Oh, okay. Okay. It's so one of the, the better Sox rules are, in sports. The Sox would have to be worse than the Rays to get into the top ten, with Correct. record wise. Which I think, I, I think they basically got to get swept for that too. We might be rooting for a sweep here. I, yeah, I we're tanking. 
Then they'd be under 500, which I, I don't know. That means something, maybe nothing. I don't know. That kind of means nothing. But if they get swept, I think they get a top 10 pick. Correct. Hmm. I mean, you said they're, what, 13 right now? Yep. But that would jump them over the A's and the no, White no, Sox. No, act, no, I know. Yeah. I know. That's what I mean. It's, look, they really only have to. You don't have to get swept. You just have to get the Giants ahead of you, and you'll be at least 10. You'll jump from 12 to 10 because two teams would have to go behind you. The White Sox and A's are ineligible to pick better than 10. Oh, better. Th- okay, so they can pick 10th. Correct. Okay. How do they do that? I know this isn't the time or place, but how do they do that with the actual lottery odds? Like if the A's keep winning it, what do they do? Do they just not give them numbers or they just slot it immediately into 10 and 11? I'm pretty sure. I don't even think they get the numbers the way it falls, but I'm not sure exactly, honestly. We've only had two years. Like everyone else must get the same (laughs) odds as. No, I know. And it's the like, I like that it's a repeater. You can't just bottom out like that. I, I do think other leagues should look into it. So they would the Sox would have to be worse than the Rays to get top ten because with how bad the White Sox have been, sure. like they are locked into ten and it looks sure, like the A's are locked sure. yeah. <laughs> are locked into eleven. And the the Rays are at nine and they play on Thursday. Sox don't play on Thursday, so there's there's a lot on the line here. I, I mean third place in the AL East is up for grabs this series only on Nesson. There is a lot going on at Fenway Park this weekend. And then Joe Castig's last series, of course. All right. It's clean 40. I actually have one last thing. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm go ahead, here. Steve. But yeah. this, is, this is good for the team. It's good for the team. Yeah, yeah. We have one park left on the Section 10 merch map, what and is it is it? Nationals Park. Mm-hmm. And they host a series this weekend. Mm-hmm. If you're listening and you live near there and you got a Section 10 shirt, Go to Nationals Park. Want to check off all the ballparks in the first year back for Section 10. That would be incredible. Yeah, that'd be big time cookies. I just can't wait for the season to be over so we can start planning the Christmas party for our religions. And atheists. Just making sure we got the money to pay everybody. Yeah. Fuck Bon Jovi. That's right. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. We'll be back on Sunday night, Monday morning for you guys. I'm going to fucking sneeze. God damn it. Bless you. <laughs> I got rid of it. I overpowered that thing. You just canceled it? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> not, now's not the time. <laughs> I don't have the energy for all this. Yeah, I was like, now is not the time for a sneeze. Um, all right. I'll be, we'll be back for the season finale episode of Section 10. On Sunday night, Monday morning for you guys. Um, should we open up the voicemails maybe for that episode? Yeah. Big time. Yeah. All yeah right. Tyler, what's the number? 774. I almost just gave out my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done talking. That went exactly as I had hoped. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. We'll see you then. Okay, love you. Bye. Buenas noches, amigos.